And just like that, we're firing back up. Going top of the order, second round, first pick. No tradesies here, so the guy who has Saquon Barkley... No tradesies like, backsies. ...is clearly on the clock here. Uh, Easton Assassins, and with the pick, it's I believe the floor is Big Coe's. So he went Saquon at 1-1, as you said, Casey. Um, we didn't really get into the teams a whole lot through the first three quarters of the first round and, and why would you just take all those running backs exactly so we pretty much just took running backs you know early and often um but now that we're in the second round we'll get in here and look a little bit this team's got ezekiel elliott um joe mixon and now saquon barkley so pos- becoming a position of strength and i mean anytime you got ezekiel elliott on your team in a 12-man league you got a position of strength in the running back room but now you add joe mixon you have Joe Mixon and you had Saquon, so looking pretty solid. Yeah, like got a locked in two starters every week for sure, and then we'll see if Joe Mixon can. Joe eat Mixon up one of your can become spots. Joe Mixon like like we want to right. out of that one one talent. If Joe Mixon can show it, and you could really really be solid. A dude's got you know the habitual uh, charge beater out of uh, Robbie Anderson. Robbie it's, Anderson is the Muhammad Ali of beating charges. It's <laughs> <laughs> bloody those charges. In and out of charges like it's his job. <laughs> Dropping charges. But his job was... Nothing sticks to that guy. It's just Vaseline up. Yeah. Rubberine. Rub, I, rubber, rubber glue. I, for, 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 <laughs> for, the speedster, for the speedster and big playmaker that he was last year, I was looking into him. I didn't realize. Dude, 6'3", uh, you know, 200 and something pounds. Dude was playing. He balled out last year and Given the fact of his supporting cast and the you know Jets overperformed last year, the front office tried to you know tank it and it didn't happen. Robbie Anderson made a name for himself last year, and I don't believe it was a fluke. Josh Doxson's on his team. Got a couple other wide receivers here and there that are probably a little more notable as we get into De- De- Funches Jarvis and Landry. Jarvis Landry, Devin Funch has made it made a really good stride last year. Of course, we covered some of that target talk in the Carolina Panthers back in the uh, Christian McCaffrey podcast a couple weeks ago so not so sure exactly what we're going to get out of Funches on a week-to-week basis in that uh, draft bring in a first round wide receiver so obviously the team's position is strength and is Landry's running back is a little more questionable than yeah being so, the sh- for sure ppr to, stud so you're going running he, back receiver or tight end and he's here. got hunter henry on the yeah. shelf I, of course yikes. this this kind of went down maybe before that dr- injury happened i think we had this tr- pick already put together before that injury maybe um, I'm not sure. It's been on close enough. Been a while. Wouldn't have changed anything. Um, wouldn't have taken Gasecki, but actually, maybe maybe I would. Now that I think about it, Hunter Henry out wouldn't be a terrible pick. So I bring he's, up the, the he's got ASJ and Steven Anderson, who could be a, a good it's a good good flyer. For Steven Anderson for the for the Texans there, and ASJ is a little crowded, but I don't I don't hate having to start ASJ most weeks if I have to. Well, real quick while we're on the ASJ, you said something the other day that when we were talking about the the Jacksonville wide receiver core. You are basically up. Mark Easley and ASJ is your two guys that are always going to be on the field. Yeah. Like, so just to take a shot there at AJ, ASJ. You don't know who the other guys are going to be on the field in the yeah. red zone. Austin Severian Jenkins, even in a crowded wide receiver area, run first offense. I feel like the Jaguars got a chance. Let's just restart this thing. <laughs> and we're on the clock at two one. And now that I've set this team up, I've, the reason I wanted to bring up those wide receivers and the lack thereof past Jarvis Landry, really, um, and Robbie Anderson, and Robbie Anderson, and Devin Funches. Doxson's got some good upside. Doxson's He's got, got the Redskins. Paul gauntlet. Richardson. Got Paul Redskins Richardson. Gauntlet. Let's give him a chance. I'm taking Kalen Balash. I don't, do you have the boo button? You don't want to hit the boo button? So oh, it's a bad pick. I don't it, have a boo button, but uh, right. So this is probably going to be the most <laughs> unpopular pick of the draft. It definitely is in this room, and I'm ready to take the hate. Um, as I mentioned, the running back room in this on this dude's team would a position of strength. I'm gonna throw a home run cut on top of those running backs he already has, and give him a shot. At having a six foot three, two hundred and thirty pound man that can that can is big, he can move, he can catch. Gase likes him. Obviously he didn't like him enough to take him before the fourth round. Not a ton of draft capital. I'm not saying he's a ton of draft capital. Complete home run cut here. There's a couple of different things to get into on this pick. Obviously, we need to talk about the wide receivers that are on the board that I passed up. We need to talk about Gasecki that got passed up. And then we gotta talk about the running back, the other running back that got passed up and what went into this Kalen Balaj pick. Yeah, so basically the theory here is is with Big Co and most of us in the room for the most part, we're going running back over receiver and Big Co continues uh that kind of theory here. Now you did take uh, Calvin Ridley, but you kind of had to take 
the next tier of guys. Now well, we're in their second round. Quickly, I wouldn't take Kalen Balaj over Calvin Ridley, Cortland Sutton, Christian Kirk, or DJ Moore. Those that put those four, and I really and my boy James Washington is right up in there. But I'm taking the home run cut in Kalen Balaj. Keep All going. right, so. Why Balage over Hines? I think is the is is the first question, and then maybe we'll get to okay, a little so, bit of receiver so I, back and forth. I like that. Why you let's let's won. start on especially on this team. Receiver. Let's start on given given the fact that yes, I do. I lean heavy running back, and then when I'm not when I'm done leaning running back, I lean running back again. So let's we'll go. Kalen Balage versus Nine Hines, which is basically the last two running backs that you could look towards. Given sure. post NFL draft, John Kelly fallout. Naheem. Naheem. Naheem, I don't want to. I don't want a one star review for mispronunciations. Oh, well, I'm. I'm Naheem? Gonna call He's Heinz. Naheem. That last name's pretty easy. I'm Heinz. Gonna Heinz. Heinz. It is. So, <laughs> Heinz is. You know what? 198 pounds. Balaj is 230 pounds. I'm a sizeist. I'm. My man's. You're he, a sizeist when it's convenient for your mm, argument. Kalen Balaj was at the Senior Bowl, catching the best passes, running the best routes from a running back position. In, In practice. practice, getting love. At practice, that's fine. Now, and I, I'll give you this: Hines on the Colts roster probably has the quickest chance to play in time. My logic there Definitely. is: Hines, even though he could be on the field and playing, he might be a potential RB two candidate, and he might be a he. His upside is a really good RB two potentially, but the potential upside of Kalen Balaj is what I'm hammering on here because this team does have a strength at running back. I'm really gambling nothing but the 2-1 pick, which could be a couple of good, solid wide receivers, but I don't know. I, I do like Anthony Miller. Obviously, Michael Gallup's going to walk into some big-time targets, and I love James Washington, what he does. But I took Kalen Balazs here. I took him over, over Hines because I'm, I'm not – I don't want to put this 2-1 draft stock on a guy who's got the potential to be a good RB2. I'm taking the stock – and it, and it's it's more likely I get that before you guys just cream me here and just run me over like a bus, I get it. Nah- Hines, Naheem Hines, Naheem Hines, however you want to say it, Hines, Naheem, has a better chance to become that good RB two than Balage maybe even has to see the field. Given that my boy Frank Gore's out there and he's a beast and 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 we've all said I like Kenyon Drake just fine. I think he crushed it down the stretch and he's I think he's going to get every opportunity to be a really good football player this year in the Adam Gates offense. So I get it. Hines is more likely to do well, but if it hits, if Balage hits, I think his I think his, he could jog he could trot the bases and be that home run guy. That's my that's where I'm at. That's why I took that pick. I'm okay yeah, well, sacrificing the, the potential. The only reason I see it as being okay on the, well, not the only reason, but one of the biggest reason I see of it being okay. For, and if you want to take the running back over the receivers, which we'll get to that point of this argument in a second, but you you're insulated here. You get you get a reprieve if we were just talking about without talking about a roster here of saying you wanted to take Balage over Hines, but you get you got a, you got Zeke and you have Mixon uh, and Saquon. Saquon Barkley, so you don't need. RB two potential here. You you and you have Joe Mixon. Right. So you have you have three guys here who you don't need the protection of guys RB2, that you may need to be able to put your liner right away. So you're able to much more comfortably, in my opinion, take a swing on a running back if that's what you so choose to do, rather than going receiver because you don't like receiver. Right. Well said. I mean, so you want to get into the the receive? Like I don't personally, I don't think Balaj sees the field if Kenyon Drake unless Drake gets injured and you know and that is not, and, and then don't conv- don't forget the inconvenient truth here which is right, right. Frank Gore well, yeah. I mean but if 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 uh if Drake, Drake got, if Drake hurt, got yeah. hurt there I mean, would obviously be plenty of Balazs and Balazs can catch the ball so there's no reason to think that he can't be out there on some third downs getting some in-game experience and catching some balls out of the backfield and getting a handoff he's not my favorite runner by any means but he's got outstanding hands and he's big and he's pretty fast in a straight line he, he does have outstanding hands and i can't blame the dolphins for taking that solid stab of potential in the fourth round on 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 a guy that has those smooth hands but i just i really don't like him as a runner i mean he just he's so on top of like effort issues which i almost i like went back and listened to our kalen balage breakdown and i was trying to make excuses for his effort issues and like Oh, when he gets to the NFL, he won't have that. And you were like, if you don't have, if you got ish, effort issues, that's probably not getting fixed just like that, like overnight. Certainly not getting fixed with throwing money at you, right? Um, Frank Gore's not going to have any effort issues. He's definitely not beating out Frank Gore for playing time. Kenyon Drake 
is 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 also a good in the passing game. I really like him in the yeah. passing game. Yeah. He's yeah. lining I out could, wide, yeah. run and go routes. Um, so I mean, aside from a Kenyon Drake, you know, injury, I I don't. I'm with you. I don't, Casey. I don't see how he sees the field too too much. Um, I I I don't like him as a runner. Yeah, he's a huge dude, but he goes down easier than this Revelry beer I'm drinking. Yeah, he's just super soft. Like I read this Roto World blurb, and usually I dislike all the hate and shade that they throw, but they they just don't quoted. Like, don't give me your opinions. They quoted a, a scout who said that he looks like Tarzan but runs like Jane, mm-hmm. and I bugged out because mm-hmm. I was and I was also upset that I didn't think of that myself. But that was pretty clever. But that's the hits the nail on the head. Well, back when we were talking about pre-draft rookie running backs, I mean, Casey said, "In what world do you have a thunder lightning combo and right. the guy that's two hundred and thirty pounds not be the thunder?" Right, right. Like I get it, and and just everything you just said, Jay Wayne. I don't believe I again. I don't think that that Kalen Balaj steps in here week one and he's giving my team anything. And like Casey said, it makes it okay because of the draft. The logic I use because of the draft picks. I mean, the the running back room that this team already has. But take that away. I'm still going to make that same play for pretty much any team. And over Hans, because I'm not really shooting for an RB2 here, I'm shooting for a potential game, league win in RB1 if it hits. Take that to the wide receivers now. Well, hold up. I didn't even mention the fact that he has a spark score in the 30, only in the 38th percentile, and the college dominator is very poor. Yeah, well, I mean, there's plenty of non- <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't really care about any of that. But that I, did, I did enjoy how everybody got off of this dude's jock once he blew the combine. I mean, he still ran a 4.46, which is very impressive I, yeah, for I a dude blow, of his I don't, size. You don't blow the combine at 230 pounds going 4.4. Well, you, it's, if but, your, if your, your spark, spark score, score. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. For all the... Whatever that sparky stuff's talking yeah. about. I got I got a junior year here at... I four, could also care less. Just, he, he, yeah. he pounded 14, just, he pounded 14, joke, 14 rushing hit. touchdowns in in his junior season. I know like one of those games was like six or he seven eight touchdowns. eight against Texas Tech, right. so count out all eight of those. Right, well, right. Give, you can give him two. two. Okay, give him two. two. We also don't count, we don't count Texas Tech games. Still exactly, eight. exactly. But he's still in the same season. Says so in the Married to the Game. Still... Still Handbook. went for still went for still got forty four catches that year, so that's, oh yeah nobody's I think the pass catching ability is what you is what you're after here and what you like out of this guy and that's that's your home run cut upside there of it just, is of, of that of, now, of his yeah, and all the negativity that I'll throw at him like all that being said I I don't hate putting this guy on my team like I mean the hands alone um and and if you have Drake I could see you maybe reaching a little bit to get this dude but there's there's no way that I would take him over either of these two running wide receivers left or that tight end. You know, I just I there's no way I can do it regardless of what team it is, regardless of your well, mentality well, of running back over wide receiver. Let's, I, let's get into the why over why over the receivers. Then we we all like running backs more than we like receivers for the most part as a rookie in a, as a rookie draft goes on. But you're in a you're in a part of the draft here where you know it's all the good got, ones are gone. You got Gallup, Anthony Miller, uh, Pettis. James Washington and Gasecki all left here. The team needed potentially a tight end. And I like how he tried to pump up these wide receivers and you're <laughs> reading them off. Oh, he, and could have used another shot on a receiver uh, on some receiver hitting here. So well, if, why why not Anthony Miller, Gallup, Washington, or well, Gusecki? I'm gonna, I want to I want to do this the right way, and I'm gonna say yeah, we're still talking about the two one pick, and it's gonna take a while here to break this down. But the thing about it is, is these are the not, these are the guys that's coming coming off the board here in a minute anyway. Right. So the reason I didn't take it's Anthony, not gonna take nearly as long to get through that exactly. So I, I Let's did be real though. It is running back over wide receiver for me in almost every situation. And again, I I'm coming. I'm off right of, there with you, and you I'm know, not that upset about the pick really. I just want to hear all well, this, this is, out. This is it. Do you have a statement prepared? Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Hindsight is 2020, and I know this this ain't gonna work out for us until this year. But last year in this same position in a two one situation, I took um, Kamara over who would have been a Juju Smith Schuster wide receiver. And it obviously was a complete home run cut. I'm not saying that Kalen Balaj is Alvin Kamara by any means, nor did he get traded, nor did, you know, this, this team give up a two next year. And did he right. come in? And, is he playing with Drew and Brees? And it's just a different and, and caliber a of player, in my opinion. Right. I yeah. Loved Kamara and pre-draft again, way more than on Balazs the ever. Sure. Just saying. Uh, that, that same 110, 111, 112, 21, 22, who knows what you're going to get. I'm just going to try for that home run cut running back. It's worked out for me in the past. And here I am again. I'm going for it. I just You brought now, up Kamara real quick. I want to just pat ourselves on the back because we were definitely way higher on Kamara than anybody else was pre-draft. We were preaching Kamara. So if you were listening to us last offseason, you got a little bit of an edge up there. Just want to do a little backpack in there. 
well, for 30 seconds, so back pre-draft, when we were talking about running backs a couple months ago, Casey's putting putting Carry On Johnson up there in his top five when everybody was hating on Carry On Johnson, and now everybody's loving on Carry On Johnson. Wasn't just uh, Casey. I had him in my top five, saying. too. <laughs> just saying. All right, so Anthony Miller. Love Anthony Miller. Love him more than I did before because and he's... It's much clear. It's clear on this team that it's the running backs aren't... And it's a strong suit of the team. So again, it does allow you to take a shot on a on a running back who isn't going to. But but it may be a smarter play to maybe try to take a shot on a receiver here. Why not? Okay, listen, dude. I wouldn't be upset if you took Anthony Miller here. I really wouldn't be upset if you're chasing the target potential of a Michael Gallup. I wouldn't be upset if you were like, hey, I'm gonna put you know Mike Gusecki on this team and just save and just put an asset on this team who's you know jumps out of the gym strong home run cut. right right I'm not upset about any of those plays I'm like just what I'm trying to stack talent on top of talent maybe st- t- maybe the running backs don't even need a running back anytime soon but if it hits now I got m- plenty of well, we all, you you have to be aware of how fast running backs come and go exactly but with that being said obviously Saquon hasn't played it down but we're th- we're thinking that he's going to stay around, and Zeke Elliott's not going anywhere unless he pulls down somebody else's underwear. True, true, or, true. Or rolls up into a head shop or hits someone. So Anthony Miller goes to the Bears, and he's supposedly penciled into a WR2 spot here in their offense and maybe running in and out of the slot, moving all around. The wide receiver position is still codependent on the quarterback getting hit the ball where it needs to be obviously you got running backs that trying to catch passes and that needs to happen too but normally it's a lot closer that's to all the that Balazs is really going to be doing but i'll take check down city to Kalen Balazs if that's the way it breaks down you're not checking down to anthony miller all the time no. if he does turn out to be jarvis landry fantastic but what, what I'm running in the slot. You still asking a second year quarterback who only got to play half the season and albeit I thought he looked pretty poised but he's coming into a new offense, second year, not nothing close to being a veteran quarterback. Tons of new options on the field, tons of new options on the team. Bring in Burton and Allen Robinson, and I mean, just there's newness all over the Bears, and there's a lot of fun here. And we love the idea of Nagy, and we love. I like what the Bears got going on. But for me to say, I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if Anthony Miller. Would, you can be a really good looking young prospect as a wide receiver and not be anywhere near my starting lineup. And I'm sure Balaj might not be anywhere near my starting lineup for two years either. But it only takes two weeks to go through a couple of running backs. Ask the Buccaneers how that worked out two years ago. And not, you know, it just you could be week three in the NFL and be on your third running back. Normally, it doesn't happen like that for the wide receivers. And then when it does, you plug in veterans. You don't just mash out your wide receiver, you know, youngsters out yeah. there. Yeah. No, I so, mean, I completely I, I agree with Miller on the stance of that. I don't really trust Trubisky very much. No, nah. he's not my favorite young quarterback. I'm super I, excited. I, I haven't for seen a, a ton Trubisky. from him, and I don't they didn't really take the chains off him and let him do it's what a, he needed to do. Last but it's year. a different offense now. Different yeah, yeah, team. Everything's different coach. 100 percent. I'm yeah. just saying, like, I, you didn't get a good. Right. Uh, I don't have a great feeling him. about Trubisky. I don't know much about so, him. I don't. It's mostly I, the punchable face. Well, yes. the, yeah. the close eyes. But I, th- I mean, I think the offensive system, and I think what he, they want to do, and what they're going to let him do, move around and throw it fast. I think. I, I mean, he, like, yeah, yeah. I, he he was a very he was protected the ball at North Carolina. He pressed it down the field, and he didn't throw a lot of interceptions. That's hard to find. But I can I can I can kind of get on board a little bit with Anthony Miller and Trubisky, and you know that not the Bears' being offense so, not could being start sold slow. on not being sold on uh, the quarterback necessarily. I'm. I like the Bears' offense, and even if they start slow, it's not really going to hurt they, Miller's they stock could too quote, much. They could start slow to the point where it's they're just slow. Their offense is learning for a year, you yeah. know. And and I and that point, you can buy Anthony Miller halfway through the season for as cheap or cheaper than he's going right now. That's all. That's all my thing. Yeah, know, but he's still going to be more expensive than Balage if Balage doesn't see the field. True. That's but there's it's just an if factor, right? You if. know, Anthony Miller's going to see the field, and if he's so but, uh, but if he, all right, if he so, Corey but Coleman's got, week one. But you got but you got Tariq Cohen, the potential maybe next to Tyreek Hill, we're all hoping. You got uh Allen Robinson, who's over there gonna get a, you know, number one targets. They paid him a bunch of money to come over there, not gonna not throw in the ball. You bring in Trey Burton, he's gonna get targets. And it's not like you only run out there with two or three wide receivers all I'm saying that Anthony Miller's not gonna come out there and get a hundred targets year one. It's just not gonna happen. He's not gonna most, catch sixty five, seventy most balls. Most likely he's not gonna see a hundred plus targets. But there is there always is a chance that he could 
be his guy underneath he, and be his safety agree. valve. And he's awesome in the red zone, so he doesn't have to catch a ton of balls. And he could score some touchdowns in this offense with that, that should be wide open because there's a lot of options to go to and sure. a lot of weapons to defend. Oh, I mean, and we just, again, he's going to be on the field week in, week out. Chances are Balazs is not. I mean, I, I mean, I hope he does well. Like my, our, you know, my boy Tyler Boyd caught fifty five as a rookie. I mean, yeah. you don't you, and that was just, just under the radar fifty five. You know, he could have an under the radar fifty five catches. But I, so now we go to Michael Gallup. I don't personally want anything to do with the passing game for the for the Cowboys. All I want is no. I'm mostly, it all day I'm long. mostly with you there. I like the player Michael Gallup a lot. And I think he, he's he's could be a great possession receiver, a great number two. I don't think he's a lead dog. I think I, I don't mind taking a shot. We're also talking about dynasty here, and we can't just be getting caught up and looking in one year. Very here. true, very true. But I mean, in one, but Dak's not going anywhere, and Dak's not a prolific passer, and that type of transformation is not coming in in very small increments from him. I mean, it's it's going to be coming in small increments. It's not going to be an overnight. Oh God. Dak turned into Carson Wentz. That right. ain't happening. But and and Dak's an open two kind of guy. There's he, Dak. Dak spreads it around very well and is with his legs and with what Ezekiel Elliott does sure. for him. He doesn't have to force. Sure, obviously. but there's 132 targets void with Des. There's 87 targets void with Witten and there's 23 targets void with Brandon Butler. That's a solid amount. So there's amount. a bunch there's of tar- targets. I, did, I already early. said target volume, Jason. I already said tar- you know Michael Gallup. But you just don't know who target it's volume. Be. Sure. I, I'm. I'm just. I don't really. I'm with you though. I'm not. For the most I'm, part, I'm not taking Gallup. I'm here. not I'm, head over Anthony heels. Anthony Miller over Gallup for me. Me too. I'm not head over heels over Gallup's situation in in Cowboy. Target situ- Target volume is there. Don't know if it's going to him or not. And what he could still he could be on the field every snap doesn't necessarily translate to targets for him. He could be get, if you line him up as a number one and he gets number one cornerback. Dak's not throwing him the ball. Dak's smart. He'd be throwing it to Switzer and whatever couple tight ends Switzer's they're using. On the Raiders. Uh, well, I meant yeah, Beasley. you're right. I was thinking Beasley. Yeah, Switzer, big good pickup for the Raiders. So anyway, there's two wide receivers that I'm just not taking over. Bel- I'm still taking the home run cut on Belage, and it's not and. No, not one thing of that is meant to be a slight on those wide receivers. I would love to see him play good ball. The thing about that is I'm going to get catches somewhere else or I can trade my second round pick next year for Larry, Larry Fitzgerald or you know what I mean? Like I, I can I can pick up a decent startable wide receiver anytime I need it. Yeah, well, I, can't I can, pick, I can up, pick up a bench riding rookie running back probably whenever I want during the <laughs> season, though. Can you? Uh, I don't. I think so. If you if in the middle of the season, if Balaj wasn't doing anything and you wanted to give somebody a second, you could probably pick him up. Yeah, maybe. You're not Especially probably not getting Anthony Miller though. Nah, maybe. But if somebody gets hurt and Kalen Balaj is in there playing ball, sure, s- somebody's going to give him give you two ones for him. That's if, just the way it if, works. If Anthony Miller is Trubisky's boy and he does is about to see. 120 targets and it looks like this is about to be a fun time for a lot of years somebody might give you two ones for anthony miller yeah it could happen if if was and i I, listen i'm i'm with you i like i'm all about taking the running backs early and often and i I, i'm they're a lot harder to come by and when they hit they hit and it's great and then they're hard to get off pry somebody's hands from i'm just i'm just playing a little devil's advocate and you should because there's a lot of people that's going to listen to this and be like ah that's stupid i wouldn't do that and and that's fine i get it that's just that's how i want to play it i'm taking i'm taking the home run cut on that two one pick at at the running back there that is a 230 pound man that is if nothing else he might have been the best pass catching running back in the draft and sure there's a couple of different guys that are up there neck and neck with him but saquon barkley well, Saquon doesn't count. He's uh, he's not even in this conversation. Royce Freeman caught more balls than the, Kalen Balaj did. The Ooh. wide receiver <laughs> position is just backfillable. Kalen Balaj just didn't really play much until this past year. That's why. Well, that was the 44 catches was in his junior well, season. Junior senior. It was weird usage this year, yeah. really, is what happened with Kalen Balaj. I don't really know what was going on there. Which is Because he does an effort. They don't trust him. Which is also a strange thing, that with the weird usage with him. So yeah, just try to make it. I try. We all try to make excuses for him in our, our breakdowns. And then like now I'm just like, I don't know if I should have made all those excuses. I'm ready to just I got I can't take either of those two. I got to take the running back wide receivers here. I, I'm, I'm, I understand the whole let's do this running back thing. Let's pound it to the ground and I'll take the eight with you guys off the rip. Maybe I'll squeeze GJ more somewhere in there. But after that, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you for up. the most part. I'm probably not taking Balazs here. I'm probably taking Anthony Miller here, 
and or Gasecki. If if you want to talk about home run cuts, I think that's a great home run cut. I like to sit both on your bench as well. He could sit on your bench for as long as as Balaj sits on your bench easily. And if the, if the tight end hits, you know they're also very valuable. Agree. As soon as they're this is this is this league particular that we're you know mock drafting for is not a tight end premium right. league, but no premium. I still can't blame you if you want to take Gusecki basically anywhere you want. Yeah, no, for it. especially in the second round. Yeah, agree with all that. And here's the biggest thing that I didn't mention I should have before we broke into that 30 minutes worth of Kalen Balazs talk at 2-1. This is, <laughs> well, there, we're doing this draft. We're doing this mock draft modeled off of a home league, and we're just going with the flow on the picks as the players come up that we would like to pick, and we couldn't trade back. So I'm not... T- Please don't. Yeah, we're anybody, trying to do the draft. We're not right. We're to just doing the draft. Talk so, about right, right. right we're trying to mock mock draft something. So, like, please don't anybody out there think that I would say you got to take you know uh, you know push push but Kalen Balage on you at two one. I did take Kalen Balage in a draft at two three, and I took him in a draft at two five. I've seen him get taken at two ten. You know, just have your eyes open and your head on the swivel in the middle early second round and figuring out where you're going to go. But you would have tried to trade back here if. Absolutely, and I and I, you know, if you've been listening to us more than thirty We're minutes, if you've ever to listened to back. us before, yeah, we it's all about trade up or trade back, or this is all. I love trading, yeah. and anytime you get a a check a, a minute in a draft to do so, I'm all for it. If you don't want to take the player that you have all, to take, all through the first round after pick one, we were talking about your trade backs and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, listen to the after show and last week about and all that kind of stuff. So some trade back. Don't just like wanted it. to throw that out there just before you stop listening to us and be like that big co's an idiot. <laughs> Welcome back. You can find us on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual handers. You can find me at IMC Myers. You can find Uncle Big Co and pick 2 1 Kalen Balaj at Dynasty Big Co. <laughs> and you can find Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's put the pedal to the metal here. Is this me? I'm uh, on the clock, yeah, huh? You, you indeed are on the clock. Let's do it. Picking for Clayton at 2 2. Yeah, Clayton's got a. Not a great team. It's, it's not. So it's, it's stacked up, except for running backs. Yeah, but he does have Geis. So we'll throw oh, yeah. Geis throw into this Geis mix. In there. And it's and it's Geis and Deion Lewis, and that's who we're rolling with all right. year long. Please don't get hurt, Deion Lewis. Right. And then it really falls off. We got Geo. Maybe Geo can catch some balls. Uh, He's Jay, got Jalen Rashard. Right. I don't know. Probably nothing. Devontae De- Booker still not dead. Right. He's got Devontae Booker, which could turn into a startable asset if he needed it. Some people are penciling him as the, as the one, and Royce is uh, it's, it's his job to lose. DeMarco could go over to like Indianapolis, be the main dude. I don't. I don't know. He could go somewhere. But he does have a nice stable of receivers that he could trade for another depth piece of uh, depth at running back here. Right. He's got he's got uh, Diggs and Larry Fitz and Pierre <laughs> and Al, Al Sean, <laughs> Bobby Woods. So that's a solid little slew here, Bobby right? Woods. He's, got he's got Zach Ertz. Curse. He's got Zach Ertz. He's got Danny Amendola. He's got a solid team. But now you throw Geis on there with Deion Lewis and potentially DeMarco gets a shot. Geo could get he, – Geo's an injury Aaron, away. Got Aaron Rodgers, so that gives him a little bit of an edge every yeah, week. He's right, and he's got John Ross and D.D. Westbrook down on the bottom. Like, well, you'll see what happens, but it's not not the worst. Those were – uh, yep, my swap. point exactly. You take right. those swings and make them into running backs last year, and you got a much better team. So I'm not. I Maybe. can't. I can't force. I can't force the running back here. Definitely on the John Ross. Uh, even though he running back is the weak spot of this dude's team, I just couldn't see myself forcing. You know the Hines pick here. I didn't. I never really even considered it. My my main thought was okay. I got Balaz just went in front of me. I got Michael Gallup or Anthony Miller, and I I immediately knew it was got to be one of those two dudes, and. When I'm on, when I was on the clock, my heart wanted to go Anthony Miller, but my head said I had to go Michael Gallup. Um, so what'd you do? I mean, I went Michael Gallup. There oh, it is. blew it! Bad <laughs> pick. Two blown picks in a row. <laughs> blew it. Why are you guys even listen to this? <laughs> Maybe I should have picked Anthony Miller. I mean, I, I think I like Anthony Miller Hold better as ground. a player. Hold your ground, Jay Wayne. Y'all boys just beat beat me back with a stick on my uh, Kalen Balash. I'm ready to defend. I'm I'm gonna defend this Michael Gallup pick. Don't you worry, All but right. but I, if well, you want to take Anthony Miller, we'll open here, up the floor then. <laughs> I can't I can't argue with you if you want to take Anthony Miller, um, but I just I think I'd rather put my trust in Dak Prescott over old Mitch. I just I'm not ready to crown Mitch. I don't feel it in my plums for Mitch. I do like what the Bears have going on, but they got more of an offense. They got more offensive weapons than the Cowboys have. Sure. So they've got an alpha wide receiver over there, and Allen Robinson, who's going to command targets. 
Nagy's going to spread that thing around. I don't got to get some targets funneled into that tight end position and and the running back position with Tariq Cohen and I just I, I I'm not ready to trust trust Mitchell Trubisky. I just I'm not. So I I uh, I had to go Anthony Gallup. I mean, who else? Michael did Gallup. Cal- Michael Gallup. Anthony Gallup. To go I just best made of them both together. Worlds. Put them together. Michael Gallup. Uh, I mean, who else do the Cowboys have to catch the ball? Well, right. We got a, we got Alan Hearns, Terrence Williams. I mean, I know this isn't a Cole prolific, Beasley. I know it's not a prolific passing offense, but they can sustain drives and they can score points. And there's there's they can not much sustain drives that Zeke and Zeke and Zach, Dak that, that those those will get you. Right. Those guys can keep the chains moving. Right. Yes, they can stay on the field. And I don't think there's too much competition here. Terrence Williams running around driving and mopeding drunk. I mean, Terrence Williams is terrible. I don't even understand how he's on somebody's roster playing or starting any week. Cole Beasley's a better rapper than wide receiver. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's aggressive. He's Cole, a pretty good rapper. I mean, Cole Beasley can. He slayed some lines he, there. And he can dunk it. He can dunk. He can. He can. I think he can. That's uh, not a rap term. I know you're not. Hip. I think Cole Beasley would be just fine. There's gonna I think be a he lot can of go between the legs and dunk it. <laughs> Basketball and a ten yeah. foot hoop. I gotta yeah. see that. He's an athlete. I I like Alan Hearns okay, but he's really only broken a thousand yards one one time back in 2015, and he's missed eleven games over the past two years. Witten's gone. Dez is gone. You mentioned all this, Casey. You, you named the targets. But Bryce yeah. Butler's gone. It's 242 missing targets from Dallas last year. Um, and and I think, I, like, I understand this pick by the Dallas Cowboys. I, it makes sense for them. When you look at Dak Prescott, he, he only had 43 pass attempts of over 20 yards or more each of the last two seasons, which was good for 23rd and 25th in the league, respectively. So he's not throwing the ball very far down the field. He, he excels in the short to intermediate area of the field, like Michael Gallup does, and that's where Dak likes to, to operate. Gallup's a versatile dude. He can play all over the field, right? Like, it sounds like Dallas just has a bunch of slot receivers well, they got, here. They got, Hearns is they got, in the slot. They got Beasley in slot and, 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 and Hearns in the slot, and the slot percentages on those guys are, are both pretty high. Cole Beasley was in the slot uh, 87% of the time, and... I don't know. Child, uh, Alan Hearns was in the slot seventy-two percent of the time. Not to say Alan Hearns can't play outside, but Beasley's mostly playing inside. Right. So they got some guys, and I don't think Gallup's really going into the slot ever. And they they do have Cedric Wilson, who I like as a late round flyer uh, for this squad. Well, the but they don't are, really have a tight end, so that that helps you out. Really, right. they they don't really have a playmaker there like Witten. And like I said, like the skill set of Michael Gallup just I feel like goes so well with what Dallas wants to do. I mean, this guy can can beat press man coverage, so I like him being able to come in and immediately have an impact. His hand fighting is on 10. Yeah. He's got some of the best hand fighting in the game. He's slippery and hard to bring down after the catch. Like he's super physical in his play, and these are all things that I like translating to the NFL field in a rookie season. He's good in the screen game. He had 657 yards after the catch last year in college, which was which was fourth most in the nation. He forced 20 missed tackles, which was fifth most against wide receivers. He's, like I said, the hands, he's karate kid off the line of scrimmage or yeah. at the top of the route. The run after the catch and the hand, the, the actual hand fighting of not allowing people to be uh, knocking him off of stuff. Now, he's sure, he can. every single receiver coming out of college can use some help against the press man coverage. I, I yeah. get it. I understand yeah. that. It's just not something that happens a ton over there, but he's got great hands for wiping on and wiping off right. uh, defenders. And I've seen him beat press coverage plenty of times. You don't always see that. You don't always see guys getting pressed, so you can't even like really uh, uh, analyze them or right. evaluate them against press because they're not getting pressed. But this guy I saw getting pressed. This guy beat Alabama press man coverage. I mean, he was he was hand fighting with the best of them. Yeah. Um. I, I think I just think he does little things well. He's smart. He has great field awareness, and I like this Dallas team to bounce back. I know they had a terrible year last year, but I mean Tyron Smith dealt with groin, knee, and back issues all year long. He just couldn't get healthy, missed some games, and overall had a, a down year, which clearly affected Dak's play. 
Zeke being not being in there for six games certainly didn't help. So comparing 16 to 17, like Dak had the fourth highest QB rating on passes under pressure in 16. That dropped to 15th overall in 2017 with, with the line kind of breaking down and, and not having that left tackle anchor. On play action passes in 2016, it, he had the second highest QB rating, which dropped to 19th in 2017 with Zeke missing 16 games six. or six games. But even with the bad year that Dak had, and as bad as that offense is, and as little as attempts as they kind of have, and, and the yards that they totally amassed, he was still 14th in completion percentage, 12th in touchdown passes, and 11th in passes dropped. Like So he had yeah. a bunch of passes dropped by his dudes, which Michael Gallup, I think, has pretty good hands. Well, right. I like so I like this dude coming in here, and, and there's not a lot of competition. He excels in what Dak wants to do and this offense wants to do, which is clock, clock kill and run the ball and play action pass. Mm -hmm. There's still touchdowns to be had. Gallup scored, I think, 20... 21 touchdowns the last two years in college. So he he can get it done in those short area spaces and in the red zone and the end zone. He's good on a fade. I just had uh, some pretty erratic QB play, and especially last year, Gallup. Very. Right. It, well, and there's some funky numbers there in that passing offense. It's, well, they're, it, they're 29th in attempts. They're right. 25th in completions. They're 29th in yards per attempt. They're 26th in total yards and 18th in TDs. Those were so those are those terrible are numbers TDs, for your fantasy receivers. But 12 receivers. in passing TDs. Those were bad attempt numbers and completion in numbers. I I like the completion percentage through Dak, and that's what I was talking about earlier. He he's he's a throw it to a wide open kind of guy because with his legs and the way he plays. He moves around enough. Even when he's not running, he's moving around to stretch the defense out. And that, you know, that that helps everybody. But now when you take away Jason Witten, who the defense has to watch because he's a first down getter, you and you say what you want to about Dez, s still a beast out there, and you have to watch out for him. So now it's just where are the – where is a mismatch other than Zeke on the field for their offense in, in, in general? Just g generally speaking, like the only mismatch I can come up with is the offensive line is solid and they got one of the best tailbacks in the game and your quarterback has legs. And and those numbers, like the attempts numbers for the team, being 29th or 25th, Casey, something like that, What's 29th, that? 29th in attempts. In passing attempts. Bad yeah. attempt, and, but the completion percentage and stuff like those are Tyrod Taylor-esque numbers right there. You know, that's what that's kind of how Ty Tyrod Taylor protected the ball. And that was worst case funky. scenario: missing your star running back, missing I, your star left tackle. I know. I'm saying, yes, the best I, players in the game. Don't get me wrong. 2016 was not great for 2017. the Dallas Cowboys. 2017 was not great for the Dallas Cowboys offense and with suspensions and all that stuff. But now your running back is. We still got plenty of time before the season starts for him to get in trouble. Hopefully, he does not. Well, you're not banking on that. Y'all boys just traded for Zeke everywhere. You got heavily, Zeke like heavy, times heavily now? weighted on Zeke. Besides the point, though. Besides, just got him because sure. he's one of the best players. In yeah, the league. and it has nothing to do with this conversation. 2018, walking in 2018, you're desless and you're witless, and those target, those vacated targets are definitely something that you cannot pretend that they don't exist. It's the quality of the target, which is. Fairly high because I'd like what you said about his mid range game and what Dak wants to do. Sure. But now you're coming in there as the number maybe the number one guy. And if you're playing in the number one role and you're facing the number one cornerback, Dak's not gonna force it to you. He did not force it to Dez, and that's what made Dez upset. Dez wanted it forced and Dak didn't force it. And I still have him at eighteen total I just, passing touchdowns. I see eighteen I see, in total passing touchdowns. I see touchdowns. a healthy, unsuspended Ezekiel Elliott getting like four hundred carries. And a hundred targets himself, and them trying to figure this thing out. I don't see him getting a hundred targets. Watch it, watch. But <laughs> I, I don't hate Michael Gallup by any means. I like the player. I like everything you said. Just like Big Co just said, like I th think he does fit into there. I just I do worry about this the passing attack on this on this offense, and it's just going to go to the open man, just like Big Co said. And I don't I don't know how much I trust Gallup. If he does end up being the the number one guy to be, I mean, I've just been saying the whole time. I think he's a great number two. Yeah, and it's really almost it's going to be a week to week play on these guys. I'm not saying Alan Hearns won't have really and good. Gallup weeks. could be one of the the best receiver in this draft, man. Uh, yeah, like, and and that's Casey and an said. Number Casey one. said it was it's not Gallup's fault that he's good at everything and not great at one thing. You know, like we said that pre draft, like Gallup's a solid receiver across the board. He could come in here and be exactly what an NFL team needs. We really didn't even talk about. 
about Noah Brown. Noah Brown might be a beast. Sure. I, well, I didn't get quite that far. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, there's, there's, but I, what I'm saying is like one week, Cole Be- we've seen Cole Beasley have multiple touchdowns in one week and then disappear for a week and then pop back up for two. Cole Beasley's a, uh, he's super slippery in the red zone. He can be open in the, in the end zone. You know, Terrence Williams, as bad as we make fun of him, you he's intimidated by Cole Beasley over there. I'm not intimidated. I'm just telling you what's going to happen in the season with your starting lineup. There's going to be players that you're going to plug in. They're going to aggravate the heck out of you if they're not named Zeke because they're going to get a touchdown one week and they're not going to do anything for two weeks. That's just how it works. If you got a team one week, Cole Beasley scores two touchdowns. Guess what? The defense is planning for next week. Hey, let's take away Cole Beasley and see who, see who he Nobody's wants to throw planning for. planning to take away Cole Beasley. I pr- you promise? Watch. It's, Watch what happens to the Cowboys offense this year. They don't have anybody that's really well, a threat. Uh, yeah. Well, and, you know, just to play a little bit devil's advocate back to us talking smack against Gallup I'll go back to the 200 plus targets that are vacated that are probably even with being the lowest in attempts in the league there's still that many targets 242 242 targets vacated so somebody's got to catch some balls somebody's got to get them thrown their way um and I agree it's a it's a rookie we're t- it's a rookie wide receiver they, they got some other rookie wide receivers maybe it's Noah Brown Terrence Williams get I'm not worried at all. Nobody's game planning to stop Terrence Williams. I, I didn't guarantee that. you that. No, just, no, I know. I know Terrence I know, Williams has got. He he's not going to be in your life. He's probably not going to be on your but, on your roster. But, but he's going to catch is, a seventy is, yard bomb week one. We can't get caught up in just again a one year thing. This we're play, This is a long term. You're buying Gallup. Maybe they find an alpha number one next year, and they figure out that hey, we need we need at least somebody that the defense focuses on. Yeah, and this guy's just Dallas. Come well, on, you man. Got, There's not going to be that long before they're going for Noah Brown sitting here at six two two twenty five. Been in the league a year already. Sure. Been in the building. Maybe played he's thirteen. Your guy. Maybe only he is caught your guy. only caught four balls last year, but at least he's been in the system. Been in the been on the team. Been in the meetings. You know, and maybe this is. And I'm not. You know, you might have a a breakout year for him. Might be forty catches. Right. You know, that's. That's just how it works. Go from four to forty, and then sixty-five the next year. Maybe you're on the eighty-five train. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, I'm probably taking Anthony Miller, or for this team, I'm probably even maybe going Naheem Hines here just for some more depth at the running back position. Um, I can't knock you if you want to take Anthony Miller. I, I after I made the pick, I was like, oh, I probably should have taken Anthony Miller because I do like him better as a player. I just I saw myself being attracted more to this situation than I really was the Anthony Miller situation. Right. And maybe that's and, wrong. And it's a multi-year thing. Is it what is. I'm saying. And, and that would, that would back, and further I, back up my point that maybe I should have taken Anthony Miller. Well, I mean, but Gallup, everything that you said is great for Gallup. I just think that the, the biggest thing, the detractor for me is that there, if he ends up being the quote unquote guy there, I don't know how much I love him to be up against the best coverage over there, like I think, which he Anthony just needs- Miller will not be, and he will be, you know, right. a little less focused on the defense, right? And I think, I just think that I don't think that it'll last that long in the Cowboys if Gallup doesn't come out and absolutely just light it up. They'll be, on, they'll be searching around for a, a dominant number. What's the Cowboys, man? They're not. Gonna- and here, here's how this goes. And right maybe it's now, Noah Brown. But right now, first week of June, there is no right or wrong answer here, Jay. That's the thing here. There is no right or wrong I'm answer. Sure, it'll end up being You're, right or wrong. I mean, well, yeah, I saw, today in. You know, in the middle of the first week of June, there is no way, you know, if anybody tells you that it's they guarantee you it's Anthony Miller. OK, if they get somebody will guarantee you that it's the Michael Gallup. OK, we'll take that with a grain of salt. You can't guarantee me anything in the first week of June. Yeah. Well, the thing with these receivers is, is everybody likes them different and everybody has them in different spots. Some type some people take Gallup as the second first receiver off the board. We saw it in one of our FFPC drafts. I'm pretty sure we First saw round. Gallup go cool. higher than everybody. Like somebody right loved Gallup because of right, right the, oh, well, it's, a, it's a golden situation. There's nobody there to challenge him. And, and maybe it works out and maybe he's awesome. Maybe he's the best out of this group in the first year and for the rest of the time. It, it, it's it's all over the place with these yeah. guys. So there is no right or this wrong answer. A, and we really won't all, know for five, three, four, five years what the what the actual right answer was. Yeah. And 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 I, I I mean myself I fluctuate. Like I said, I fluctuated back and forth both pre and post making this pick because I'm like, ah should have taken Anthony Miller. I don't know. I'll just stick with Gallup though. I, I, yeah. mean, I wasn't gonna go back and change my pick. And you can't trade out. Maybe you trade back if you if you're on the clock and you can't decide and you find someone who 
really wants a guy. But you can't go too far asset, back in the single in the single uh, it's quarterback to, league right here. Right, and it's about to fall Good off. Point. And point. and these are solid options to take. And right. and you almost can't really go too too wrong I'm with any of them. Pretty cool with having any of them. Like, yeah. like I said, I'm not. But it's that about upset to fall to off quickly. At all. Like middle second round, it's about to really fall off as far as who's who's out there to take. Um, I say uh, let's go ahead and take a break here. You guys got anything else for Michael Gallup? No. Let's uh, let's take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with. Uh, pick two three for just your ready pleasure. to blow three in a row here yeah <laughs> blow it all right guys welcome back we're rounding out the old middle of first second round here at two three um casey's gonna be on the clock here with tickle monsters team <laughs> this team just drafted a young stud in the making and nick chubb in the first round at one three and um what what can you do here casey with this team to further add talent Make a pick. Yeah, let's do it. Well, with this pick at 2-3, um, I'm going to take Naheem Hines here. Whoa. And Ooh. told you, three in a row, blowing it. We're blowing it in the second round. Anthony Miller. Off the tracks over Keeps here. hanging out. No man's land. Hopefully he didn't come to the draft because he's been sitting in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm going to get to the reason why here. So when you look at this team, Tickle Monsters, obviously, like Big Co said, I drafted Chubb for this team the first go round. Um, and then other than that, he's basically just got Melvin Gordon as a starting running back. Yeah. Um, and the other running backs are Doug Martin, who I take. I'm taking a lot of I've, I'll swing on Doug Martin at the end of a lot of drafts. Got he, no problem with it. I got sets, a soft spot for old Doug. Yeah, you but do. it could be it, it's, it's it's a gamble. It and didn't look great last year. Right, it didn't look, Doug, it looked awful last year. Doug Martin is setting up to be absolutely free. Right. At this um, point in time, if if you're doing the you know the old uh, best ball drafts and stuff right now, Doug Martin costs you nothing. Sure. So and then Bilal Powell's his other running back who, there uh, did fantastic with the opportunities given to him last Limited year, but not a guy that I'm trusting Limited to be my second running back or be a startable third running back if that's the route that I want to go. And then James White, which it's always up and down. They just added Sony, and there's it's all over the place. So you got Melvin and you got Chubb, but. I love Chubb as much as the next guy, and I do think Chubb is going to be a workhorse. I have no problem taking Chubb 1-3 overall. He is my 1-3, but he could kind of live in running back purgatory this year and just kind of be – there's Duke Johnson and Carlos Hyde over there. I don't know if he comes right into a workhorse role. Maybe he's getting you 12 carries a game or something like that. There's a chance Nick Chubb roster clogs you for a season. Right. There's a chance. So outside of that, he's got really no running backs, and you're scared to start Chubb every week. Um, and then you go down to the receivers here. He's got Michael Thomas. He's got Aguilar. He's got Will Fuller. He's got Julian Edelman coming back, who say what you want. But if he's out there and healthy, Tommy's going to hit him up. He's got Cam Meredith coming back, uh, who's now with Drew Brees. He's got Juju Smith-Schuster. He's got d He's got Keelan Cole. He's got Curtis Samuels. So bottom end of this bench, there's a bunch of guys that if you really needed one of those three to start, some week you probably could in your receiver spot so i think it was pretty tough making this decision obviously anthony miller's the best player available on this board to me um and i really love his skill set but this team really needs a running back and if you're gonna compete week in week out and try to get to a playoff this team is gonna need some production out of the running back two spot and i think naheem hines can get that for this team yeah, I mean, this is an explosive dude, and, and there's not a lot that the Colts have going on. Um, we didn't really do a breakdown for Naheem Hines uh, in, the, in the pre-draft or post-draft of our, you know, we just didn't get all the way that deep into the running backs. So right. we kind of had to do that for this coming up. And, I mean, it's easy to tell that, he, that he's explosive. The highlight tape is really fun to watch. He's got some solid balance. He's, he's similar to Mac in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, especially, like, when people are trying to tackle him from behind or scraping it like the the shoes or the the jersey, he just it's hard to get a hand on him, and he never Tough gets to wrangle. He never really gets tripped up. He's got that good, you know, contact balance. Right, and he does a bit say. of bouncing outside. He, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll, I could knock him all day for his running back abilities and between right. the tackles. Um, but that's not really what you're. You're not drafting him for a between the tackle runner here. And no, clearly. I could have drafted Anthony Miller here and taken or and kept Miller or taken Miller and paired him with some of these receivers and made a play for an established running back right. or you know made and a play for another younger, younger running back. But that's also not what we're really doing here. Exactly. So I wanted to 
take Hines here and and give you some reasons why I'm taking him. And I just I think the biggest reason overall is that he's loaded at receiver and that I think Hines can come in and he's got the best chance to be. Obviously, Belage is gone because Big Co took him at two one, but still. Balaj to me has a better chance of coming right in and being an RB a startable RB two for your team. No, you said Balaj, but you meant Hines. Or so Hines has a better chance of coming in and yeah. being a startable RB two for for your squad, especially for this team who is clearly starting mostly receivers every week. Um, yeah, with the exit with the exit of Frank Gore from the Colts. I mean, nobody's scared of Robert Turbin to gun show, which, you know, he could come in there. He and, could and get the bulk of he, early down carries. He could here. get the bulk of all early down carries, but between it's basically Marlon Mack. And Nine Hines and Wilkins, right, so, right. So and and there's all no of them, workhorse imminent is basically exactly right. Zero proven out of any of these guys. Right. Basically, Mar Marlon Mack looked good in some spots last year, and he looked not so good in some spots last year. Did play year. with so, a torn labrum. So though. basically, yeah. at this point, it's free range Colts running backs. Sure. Free range. Sure. Right. So I could have also went Gasecki here, who I've I've I think that's a, the best home run cut on the board. He could use a you could use a tight end here. He's got Howard and Seals Jones, which isn't the strongest room. But how often does Gasecki come in and or a rookie tight end come in and really help your room right away? I'd probably be trying to poke around and find a wily veteran to start rather than right. rolling the dice on Gasecki. Or I'm probably going Howard. Or you got Seals Jones who could turn into something all right. And in, and in one tight end, no premium league. A lot of people are struggling at the tight end yeah. position. Yeah. Um, but like you guys said, man, the biggest thing is that there is no imminent uh, workhorse in this backfield role, imminent workhorse role in this back backfield. And I feel like there's an immediate PPR upside to Hines. Like you said, it, we're not, I'm not drafting him to be your between the tackle guy. I'm drafting him to be the guy who can get you can get the ball to him in space. And on the top of all that, you know, the Colts already have quite the shaky wide receiver room. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I love taking shots on uh, Grant and Rodgers and Kane and Fountain late in drafts. Yeah. You know, it could really pan out for you. I have no problem taking those. Actually, I love taking those guys later on in drafts. Give me all of them. Somebody's going to catch some balls. Um, but Hines could get every opportunity to get snaps out of that slot. And he's a receiver in his, Started in his as day. A wide and he caught college. plenty of balls in college. And obviously 89. the coach come out and as much as said, you know, hey, I love this guy's hands. His intelligence has been off the charts and he's going to, you know, he's going to see snaps at the slot. Obviously this is all meaningless at this point. Take it for what it is. It's yeah. a headline. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, it's a coach giving his rookie a nod of saying, Hey, you know, we, yeah. we believe in you here, young fella. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as far as what's going on in the back, well, one more thing, one yep, more thing, yep. take it, take the, it. The, the piece of all this that I haven't even mentioned yet, that if and when Andrew Luck comes back and plays, this uh, offense will be humming right along and there'll be balls going everywhere and the, the offense will sustain drives and score points and, and, and do all of those things. I agree. So this is the, that's the biggest upside of this pick is Andrew Luck is just sitting there, which I believe that this man's going to play football again. I, everyone's all freaking out, but I, I think he's going to be just fine. He went over and got his shoulder taken care of. He's following, just being precautious. Went to Europe. I had some stem cells. Right. Probably. Kobe did the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, like he'll, I, I believe he'll be all right and back. He has no reason. Andrew, what does he need to throw a football for? Yeah. Why do, he doesn't need to throw a football until there are a couple of weeks out. Yeah. He knows how to do it. Oh like, yeah. He didn't forget. <laughs> like this. If, if, as far as you're saying that, now's a great time to come in and lowly invest into the Colts' offense. Right. Andrew Luck included. Um, obviously, I'm T. not. T.Y. Hilton. I'm not a quarterback guy. On. T. Y. Hilton has pushed down as far as he's been in three years. Um, like you said, the Deion Canes of the world, those kind of guys can be picked up for dirt cheap. Uh, Ryan Grant, I think, is going to have an opportunity to be a monster as far as targets go. If luck comes around, obviously, you got a couple toy tight ends there with Ebron and Jack Doyle. Just go pick up some Colts guys on the cheap. We're at with the potential of a luck coming back, what they could do for that, that turnaround value. Not like you're going to pay the type of value. Like, not like, hey, go, let me go out and grab some Saints and some Rams and some Patriots type of thing where you know you know it's already established the values up there you can come in and get the colts very cheap so marlon max on the roster and he had a lot more rushing attempts in college than nine himes did not necessarily as prolific hines had a 43 catch season as a sophomore but only really started getting the rock last year but he played in the S acc so he had a decent, you know, 5.6 yards of carry, went over 1,100 yards, still caught 26 balls, 12 rushing touchdowns. 
You know? And to top all this off, he's a phenomenal kick and punt returner, which we'll which get. Helps. We'll talk to that in a, that, to that point in a second. But they've changed the kickoff rule, and he's a guy they can use in the kickoff, and it's a little bit more like a punt. So the opportunity, more opportunities for Hines to get you points and and six points at, on a kickoff. Okay, that and just be in the game if he's not necessarily earning a spot on the field. If, if he didn't earn a spot right. as a run as a running back between you know downs one through three nothing else when the other team's kicking it back to you maybe he's on the field and makes it you know earns more of the coach's trust as the season goes on as some rookies have to do um just wanted to touch on some of those numbers there for those guys um you know marlon mack we serial bouncer last year coming out we you know kind of home run explosive type of player very he was one of my favorite yeah shots to take in the draft a shot and 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 eventually he got up too high where it wasn't a shot anymore, and I was out. Exactly. So, and that's my, I'm so glad you said that because that's where Nain Hines, a couple months ago, it was, hey, it was just, it, it was kind of trickling around in the back, standing in the corner, or the back of the draft room. I mean, I've seen him, I saw him go, I think it was at 112 or 2 1, maybe. And it, what well, I think is we it? saw him at 110 in one of our, was FFPC it? I, I'll drafts. go back and look at that and I should throw you that in the after show. Like nine Hines secrets out, people. Somebody's trying to take him in your draft. If you got twelve guys or more on your team in your league, somebody's staring this guy down. So it's not like you're going to be able to get him, you know, super cheap anymore. And so you're really like Casey just took him over Anthony Miller. So you're making a stand here. You're putting in some. Putting well, in mostly, little... mostly just because of the structure of this team. Okay, fair like enough. That's that's the whole point but of this normally, process of what we're doing. We're drafting because Miller of teams yeah. and needs, and just seeing what this team might need to to win and do its thing. It's fine at receiver. It's got plenty of guys loaded. I'm taking the guy who. Could, fair enough. You know the the RB two who could get me some catches and and I could be startable because I'm not sure if I'm gonna even. I don't even really have one of those everything's up in the air in my second running back spot right now true that's the reason why i'm taking anthony him over anthony miller in most cases i'm taking anthony miller over Hines. yeah i think i think i gotta take anthony miller here um i i, I get the Hines pick you know he had 89 career receptions he, he said he caught 70 of those balls from the slot he threw that stat out himself on uh it was a good morning football or something i was watching um and, and, and he did average 5.6 yards per carry as you mentioned big co he made 22 career starts in college. Ten of them were at wide receivers. So that that all sounds pretty good. I think the the, the problem that I have with him is 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 that it's it's mostly just the straight line speed. And if you give him a path, I mean, he obviously ran the fastest 40 of any running back in the combine. Yeah. And he's got pretty phenomenal straight line speed. But it doesn't. He just doesn't look like the most shiftiest guy to me when that's kind of his mo you don't see he, he struggles a little bit with gearing down i don't love the change of direction you don't see him making people look silly out there um like which is evident he didn't run a sub seven second three cone drill which i hate <laughs> right. that um and and, he, and you see him take a lot of big shots like even in the highlight tape he's taking some shots and you get into like i think maybe there's like two games you can watch yeah there's uh, not on a draft breakdown and, and you he just you see him getting blown up a couple times. I don't like that because he is so small, 5'8", 198 pounds. If you're a sizist at all, you're going to be, you know, scoffing yeah, I, a little I, bit at that. I was ready to jump on that train real quick on on top. I was ready to yell that out. But when you think about it, like, you know, Christian, He's basically McCaff playing Christian, slot receiver Christian here. McCaffrey's sitting here at 205. So what's the there's seven, plenty of seven guys, pound difference? Right. Like there's 200 pound running backs in here. And there's the. Nobody's there's, expecting this guy to carry the ball up the middle right. of the field. Right. They're and expecting him to get in space, catch some balls, and get upfield. Get in slot, catch the ball, get upfield. Yeah. That's true. That's and, all you're asking. And about. I actually liked what I saw from him in pass protection. So that that's going to that's gonna bode well for him. And, you know, the receiving ability is is really nice. Um, I. I if you got if you got return yardage in your league, I think yeah, I think maybe that that's a little bit of an upside. But even then, I saw him making some bad decisions in in the return game. Like I mean, he 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 returned some balls that he shouldn't have returned. He tripped and fell and did like I I know I complimented him on his balance. Maybe that's just some fluke stuff. And there like I said, there wasn't too many games to see, but it wasn't like. I mean, he, he did average 24.7 yards on kick returns. He only had 12 punts. He didn't return a lot of punts at all in college. He took he did take one of them to the house. Um, he said he, he returned a lot of punts in high school, more so Everybody than kicks. Does. But, you know, he doesn't have, like, a ton of experience in the punt return game. Um, but I think he'll get on the field with, with, with kick returns. I don't know how – with the new, we'll discuss the new rules and stuff a little bit, but I don't know – 
Yeah, I don't know. I I just I wanted to like him a lot, and then I came away not liking him a ton. But then I I get the receiving ability, so it's, that's what you're after in here. You're not after a running back here. You're after a guy who can catch the ball yeah. and get upfield. That's all you're after here. And there is nobody to really take his role on this team away from him is yeah and, is, and to is double, what i'm into to double, there's no playmakers there's not a ton of there who's going to be the slot receiver on this team and he can get snaps his running back and catch the ball and just like you said okay pass protector well maybe to double down on what you just said a minute ago if if luck's in there playing ball there's space to be had right because you're going to obviously ty hilton will stretch the defense no matter who's playing quarterback but if you can't throw him the ball and deliver an accurate pass 30 yards down the field it doesn't matter right so if luck's out there you'll have space and maybe that that really takes off the one last thing about this backfield is though you have the jordan wilkins who comes in at 6 1 217 so it's going to be him and turban fighting for early down rolls right but the exact same type of college-looking profile as far as stats go that Hines comes in, first couple of years, not a whole lot. Then he gets some run as a senior in the SEC from Ole Miss with 155 totes, just over 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns, and 26 catches. So same type of thing that Hines... Completely different player, though. Yeah, no doubt. Definitely not the fastest guy to combine and uh, you know, not, a, not drafted in a sense where he's, hey, this is our our scat back this right. is our this know, is let's this take is a chance on a guy Darren and Sproles. see if he blossoms into right. something great for it, our team this is this is their, the colts drafted he Hines came out of nowhere he played great in the sec hoping that got maybe his chance acc hoping that maybe he sec for oh you're wilkins. talking about wilkins my bad yeah hoping that you know Hines could become a darren sproles guy not right so this which then leads me to the rb2 production you're looking well for. no let's obviously frank reich takes over this team okay as the head coach um, now he was with the Chargers, uh, 14, 15, and, and before that, and then with the Eagles in 16 and 17. So we don't really know what this system's necessarily going to look like. Um, but when you when you go and you dig into stuff of what Frank Reich's saying and what Doug Peterson says about him and all that kind of stuff, um, he's basically Reich says it's going to be an up tempo offense and uh, with aggressive you know kind of play calling. Um, he's going to call the plays, but it'll kind of be a collective effort, which is exactly what they just did in Philadelphia. Reich and Peterson sat down and they built this offense together. Mm -hmm. Peterson's calling the shots, but Reich has his hands all over that offense. Um, and, you know, when they when he talks about it, he's talking about he's building around the players on the roster and what they do well, which is something that you love to hear. Yep. And, you know, not everybody does that. Reich just commit just put together a nice offense over there in Philadelphia. Um, and then when you look at the Eagles running back room, you know, you see this maybe one kind of shaping up like the Eagles running back room just did of there isn't really one guy and there's some p parts and pieces moving around. Well, the good part and piece of this guy, I know you can sit there and say, well, which running back did you really want last year for the Eagles? Well, Drew. Darren Sproles got hurt. Right. And the year before that, you saw Darren Sproles have 94 attempts, Crushed 71 it. targets and 52 receptions. Mm -hmm. and, and just get tons of work in that offense. Um, and then you go to Philly and you got Aguilar in the slot and some good receivers and, and weapons all around you. And when you come to Indianapolis, you know, Hines has a good chance of maybe seeing a bit more action in the slot. Good, good call. Don't um, have don't have the weapons that, that that Philadelphia did on the outside and right. in the slot to take targets. From Eagles you. just went to the Super Bowl without a main guy. Yeah, and so that 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 could lead to some even more run for Hines here and there. It's clear that Doug Peterson likes to throw it to a guy. When Woodhead was in 2015, had 106 targets, 80 catches, six touchdowns. Yep. Um, along with Melvin Gordon getting 37 targets with 33 receptions, average 5.8. Um, uh, a reception there and then 2016 they lose woodhead early melvin gordon has 16 only plays 13 games he has 57 uh targets for 41 catches and then between pharaoh woodhead and hillman you got 32 more targets because they had a revolving door of no doubt so about there's, it there's room to be back catching balls in this type of offense and you know that he wants to do that or at least i you don't know but you would to putting all the context clues together you would think that this is what now you didn't see a ton of players catching a large volume of balls last year in the Philadelphia offense. But I think that's just because there wasn't a guy that they thought. And then you saw Corey Clement come on in the, in, An undrafted in the playoff, free right, agent which is the reason why I time. believe that he was right. Wasn't in the mix of things early because hey, you're undrafted. What's supposed to be. You got well, it. It's not supposed to be. But then when you be. get in the playoff run, him and Ajay kind of take things over and, and you see a lot of catches coming out of Corey Clement. So yeah. 
I think there's a lot of room in this system for a guy like Hines to produce at a high volume of catches. I really like that you put all that together because you, when you go back and it sounds a little crazy. Yeah, you said Danny Woodhead and you said this, but like those, that's you. Do, Danny Woodhead doesn't coach to catch those balls if there's not a game plan specific to throw it to a running back in space. And that's all you're saying. You don't have here. Dan, you don't pick Danny Woodhead up on your team if you didn't plan on throwing it to a smaller, shiftier guy out of the backfield. Is that that's it? That's it. So. There's my Naheem Hines over Anthony Miller. It's basically predicated on the fact that this team had a ton of receivers and needed an RB2, but I'm making my case for Hines here, and I'm okay with you taking Hines anywhere in this you know, kind of second roundish area. Just, again, running backs over receivers for the most part. I'm with Big Co., and, but I just don't know most times I'm taking Anthony as, as Miller. everyone gives him credit for. I just don't. We'll see. I don't know if he's a shifty. I hope I so. I don't really care about that. That's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. really care how shifty he is. He's fast in a straight I mean, you line. Get you, him just, in space. you just said he had good balance. What? What? Let him. Let him try to get you around the edge, and then guard me when I'm in the slot or coming out of the backfield as a receiver. Yeah. He'll, and I'm All sure right. he'll still get a couple of attempts. So. That's where I, that's what I'm going with with Hines. You guys could all suck it. <laughs> all <laughs> let's right. suck it right to break. Let's, let's suck it to break. Let's grab a couple beers. Suck it beers. long and suck it hard, Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Trebek. We'll pick two four. Welcome back, everyone. We're gonna keep going with this rookie mock it up before you fuck it up draft. We got pick two four coming up here. What do you got, Big Co? <laughs> now you may pick. I'm going to have to stop the slide. I'm going to grab Anthony Miller right here. Should have been out of the draft years ago, but he super excited to <laughs> put my team name and logo on him, Put it, let him put a hat on, get a picture taken, hug, yeah. the, hug the commish, Anthony Miller. He's your number one jersey, but you're not going to wear number one. Yeah, well, number two, right? In the second round? Yeah. Right. So uh, speaking of that, let's talk that about why, why we're excited to, yeah. dra to draft Anthony Miller. <laughs> so Anthony Miller, they, the Bears trade up to get him after they've already signed a, a big name wide receiver and brought in a the you know the flashiest tight end free agency guy in the market. So two of them, two of them. So they bring in they bring in Anthony Miller and you know Roto World's got the quote, they got the uh, air quotes that he's uh, penciled in as the slot receiver guy. Um, not sure. Just take a whiff of a sharpie over yeah. there. It's falling asleep. <laughs> like the salts on the yeah. sidelines. Yeah, I could probably take a whiff of one of those. Um, we got some essential oils. Anthony Miller's like, help. give me a sharpie whiff. I, I need to perk up over here. He, we're sorry, Anthony Miller. You fell asleep on this, you know, in the green room over there. We somehow tried to justify taking a couple of, you know, fourth round running backs. Over, over you, you. <laughs> and, and mine then, was strictly driven on team right right team needs so anthony miller i hope you're the absolute stud of the draft class we're so sorry to pick you at two four here um, feel bad for stuff me you're sorry it's in a sack mister <laughs> right for me it was uh, this, this was a this is a really <laughs> really fun pick here i i did it was i had anthony miller we've already mentioned gusecki's name a couple times and we've and james washington who I absolutely love to death. No, I love him to death. So, no way, I do. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't go wrong here. I had three guys that I liked. The running backs were gone. There's no. I mean, I was. I felt like I was free. I'm open. I'm open. To, you know, my <laughs> the running I, back chains have broken yeah, off. I'm and just, you're ready to draft. I'm, the wide here. Receiver. I am at two four, and I just don't have the uh, automatic running back pick to be made. So, uh, I've Anthony Miller again. Probably could have taken him where I took Kalen Balaja two one. Jay Wayne could have taken him where Michael Gallup goes off. Naheen Hines, we tried to justify that. Screw yeah. up, you know. Yeah. So here we are, Anthony Miller, plugging into a team. Worst to first, choo-choo. <laughs> choo-choo. Bad team name. Was it, is it, are we supposed to read into that? that that's a train? Yeah. Choo-choo. Dude's got, dude's got a couple of running backs that have some potential. He's got Derrick Henry coming in. He's got Leonard Fournette that's getting, you know, all the volume. Latavius Murray looked really good last year when Dalvin Cook got hurt. And I just, there's no way you can force a running back on this team. with he's got Hines, Sony with, Michelle. With, with Hines and Balazs already gone. Exactly. There's nobody and, really left. Sony Michelle's already on the team. So you look here and Gusecki's out there. But the one big thing for me was he's got Gronk. He's I got mean, Gronk. Obviously, he's close to hanging it up. Possibly he's got Gronk and Njoku, and and Gusecki is probably, you know, the way the high end, top drafted tight ends go. Obviously, Hayden Hurst went earlier because he's a dual threat blocking tight end. But 
Gusecki's going to be plugged into an Adam Gase situation where, yeah, Adam Gase gets a lot of credit for tight ends. Let's be honest. Peyton Manning was throwing the ball to, uh, to you know, what's his name? Orange Julius. Julius, yeah. Julius Thomas. So Peyton Manning was throwing it to Julius Thomas. So let's see if Adam Dallas Gase. Clark. Let's see if Adam Gase can get some targets over here to Gusecki. But they did take him, and he did, like, crush the combine, and his highlight tapes of catching touchdowns is inevitable. You can't take it away from him. And it's with Gronk and Joku, with Gronk and Joku, it was it was Anthony Miller for me here. And again, it was it, it was a it's a it's a tough decision for me on James Washington. And I got to tell you, now that I'm, I get a chance to do it, I'm loving the fact that James Washington's slipping in all these drafts. I got my eyes on him in some rookie drafts coming up with some some mid to late eyes mid, to, mid to late second round picks. But this is uh, a good pickup for depth in the receiving core. He's he's lacking. He's got Golden Tate and Devontae Parker, Muhammad Sanu. Um, and then he's got old uh, Godwin down here in Switzer. Chris Godwin's a very solid talent, and Jer- I like he, the flyer that that could be Jerron Brown. Obviously, Brandon Marshall gets just gets signed into Seattle, but I've really liked the potential opportunity for Jerron Brown in that offense. Um, still there, I mean, B. Marsh is like forty. Um, yeah. So yeah, not a lot of tight end, not a lot of wide receiver. I mean, Devonte Parker still yet to be seen. I hadn't seen him in two years since Jay, starting to build Jay, up. Jay Cutler was throwing him the ball. Yeah. And Golden Tate's going to get you 90 catches. You know that. And, you know, Calvin Ridley comes in here to get get a little muddy with Muhammad Sanu. So, yeah, here we go. Anthony Miller's on this team, and I feel good about it for the guy. For sure. I mean, he needed some some wide receiver depth. He's best player available, in my opinion. Has for sure. been maybe for a few picks now. Right. Um, yeah. The, the bummer is, is in actuality, when we get to this draft, Anthony Miller will probably be gone. And I'm not that it's a bummer, but he probably get James Washington – Somebody would have to take Kalen Balaj up there and Naheem Hines up there for him to get uh, Anthony Miller for the or Gallup or somebody else. Oh, so, for him, I right. see what you're saying. Yeah, because of the way we've tried so, to yeah, two, four, plug four, I'd be back. ecstatic to have right. Anthony yeah. Miller. So fall he's going to get a, a receiver stab here if he if he wants one. He's which is probably going to have a good chance at James Washington with no problem. Or somebody like, or like Gallup, I said earlier, maybe, yeah. all these. Players are jumbled up receiver wise. Everyone likes different guys. Exactly. A lot of person at personal, you know, a, opinion on where these guys should go once you get past the Calvin Ridleys and the Suttons of the world. Well, we've done a lot of talking about Anthony Miller throughout the first three picks. If you want to go back and listen to the why we weren't, why we wanted to take Anthony Miller, but we didn't. But to kind of wrap this guy up really quickly, I mean, he's just, he's really fun to watch. He's a tough, gritty guy. He's fought for everything he's ever had to get. He, he, came on as a walk-on he put up 22 bench reps which to me really speaks to the work ethic Boy, that boy's strong um, yeah, 5'11, 190 right putting, those, putting that up thick up he's awesome against the sideline he's got a great toe drag he works well in condensed areas and he's solid after the catch he's built like a running back um and then he didn't he didn't participate in the combine he was hurt but then he comes out in his pro day Runs a six six five three cone drill, has a thirty nine inch vertical, and so ran a six seven. Ran a four five right. flat, uh, forty. So like a four four five four, five. Five, four <laughs> five five. Right, which none of those. those which he's coming pretty, off a foot injury, so he's probably still lacking some explosion. Which doesn't right. even matter because he's so good. The coaches knew it. They traded up, took him in the second round. Right. And I don't give a crap. That the he best. Wouldn't. The best thing about this guy uh, is. Obviously, I love the grittiness and the lunch pail hard hat mentality and all that kind of stuff, but his red zone prowess is outstanding. There you go. Him and Mitch need to get on. Mitchell needs to understand this and get on the same page. He just get, it's, he's impossible to guard in the box. Well, that, that put takes him in you, a box. That take, impossible to guard in a box is, is a really good good talent for a wide receiver to have. That takes you right back to kind of what I was saying when I you guys said, hey, I can't believe you didn't take Anthony Miller at 2-1, and then both of you didn't take him. So anyway... Mine got, was predicated on needs. You, <laughs> Yours was wants. <laughs> you got right. I like that. You got you got. <laughs> a, a, Allen Robinson's definitely a red zone threat. Trubisky can run around with his legs, so he could t- he could run it in. Jordan Howard is proven to be able to pound the rock. Tariq Cohen's going to be all over the place. Nobody knows where he's even going to be. And then you got um, Trey Burton, who done did nothing but catch touchdowns when Zach Hurts got hurt. So unless. Either Anthony Miller is Trubisky's favorite target in the red zone or Trubisky comes out and crushes 30, 30 or 35 touchdowns this year in his second year. 
there comes my logic of saying I want to take the home run cut on a running back over the guy Anthony Miller. That being said, all Anthony Miller has to do is show just what Chris Godwin did down the stretch, that he's a capable NFL receiver, and all of this love that we gave Anthony Miller pre-draft is Except warranted. Except he's going to get so much more opportunity than Godwin is. But the, all, you, all you got to do is just show that you can play football, and everybody that loves you loves you even more. So... I think that Anthony Miller is going to come out here on an up-and-coming offense, and I know it could. I think it's going to be great for him because you don't have to have the pressure of being Gallup or any of those other guys, and there is other options to go to, and Anthony Miller should be the one of the least guarded players on the field. Least guarded and players. And should be able to get a nice red zone rapport to go to the open man, which Anthony Miller does well. I love all that. Anthony Miller is not going to be the first read, but he, it, at the same time, he definitely could be the first read as in a la hey look off the safety or look over here for a split second throw it to anthony miller it's gonna be wide open because you know you're double teaming it a rob and when trey burton and or starts, burton if, if burton starts beating you up you're in trouble so anthony miller could be the least guarded player on the field and i love that angle but I think it's, I mean, it, maybe it doesn't equate to too, too much as a rookie, but I think it's, it's nice for him it'll equate to, to, enough. to gaining confidence and not being, you know, just sure the most heavily watched asset on the field. It helps him and, and Mitch kind of get on the same page a little bit and develop a nice rapport and, and something to build on definitely like going into next season and all that kind of stuff. I like it. Yeah, it was a great pick. Should have gone off the board earlier. We were kind of blowing it. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break here. Two five. Two and five. Anybody? You just want to mosey on after the break. And that signifies we're back. <laughs> Good to see you again on WFMZ ninety three. <laughs> just kidding. Dingo and the baby. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the FF Dynasty's Married to the Game. You can catch us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual handles. I'm at IMC Myers. Jay Wayne, who is sipping that cold beverage that just you heard the loud crack and a pop of. You can find him at Jay Wayne's World. And we got old Big Co at Dynasty Big Co. The lights are off. (laughs) Don't Twitter Twitter him. It's dusty over there. I'll retweet a good stat every once in a while. All oh, right. the commission's coming up. There we go. Pick two five. Old Jay Wayne's on the clock for Tickle Monsters, who previously I just picked four and took Naheen Hines, and he's got Nick Chubb. So where are you going, buddy? Uh, probably should take Gusecki here. Gusecki. I always mess his name up. Probably should take Gusecki, uh, but I'm going James Washington. Yeah? I just uh, I love him. <laughs> this dude is one of my favorite wide receivers for a while in this draft class. I'm pretty enamored with his downfield play. I don't care what his combine metrics ended up being. You'd have to be an idiot to not recognize that this guy is talented for the deep ball. Yeah. He just crushes it. He's not as fast as Martavis, right? They just got rid of him in Pittsburgh. But he can flat out get behind a defender. He's got a strong upper body and excellent ball tracking skills. He just wants it more than you do. And when that ball's in the air, it's his. So I, I, I really like... This offense's ability to support three wide receivers, I think he's going to have an easy time of it out there with A.B. and Juju commanding respect. And I could see him splashing throughout the whole season with big plays and maybe even have some flex appeal because he's he's the one play day kind of guy. Make your right. whole day in one play. Boom. Absolutely. Thank agree. you. Yeah. I agree with that for sure. But, uh, you know, between, between Antonio Brown, Juju, what he's going to command because he did make a name for himself – Le'Veon Bell's ridiculous amount of running back targets and anything that comes out of that tight end position, I think that it would be maybe a little frustrating unless you've got a deep league where you can put maybe a second flex. flex the flex appeal would come out of James Washington. And the reason, I mean, I'm not saying you're going to want to get him in your lineup right. necessarily. But it, there's plenty of there's plenty of high octane plays in that offense right. for him that you know quick hitters man uh, your your clemson receiver bryant just ships over to the other coast and and goes right. to writers that Mar- right. so Mar- they got rid of a, they got rid of a headache in the locker room and brought and in a great you guy say it, Casey, they brought in that's that's the what, exact opposite right yeah. i got that's exactly what i have there i think you you got rid of a guy who's a, a locker room clown and you picked up a locker room stud right. in James Washington who obviously like you said is not as fast as Martavis Bryant but he could definitely do the same thing that Martavis Bryant could do maybe even better because you know he's going to be 
in this facility, right. giving it his absolute all, being a great teammate and trying extremely hard. This is a team that loves to take a shot in a game, and James Washington's going to get his chances to be the shot. There is nobody else to be the third wide receiver. Uh, yes, Big Co, there's, you're probably not going to want to really start this guy, but in a pinch, yeah. right, on some bye weeks or some injuries, you could potentially play him you know, if if you really needed him, and just like you said, he's a make your play in one day, and it doesn't even have to be a vertical like play. He could hit you up with a screen and right. take it to the house. He's oh, got yeah. those kind of moves. Especially, a, especially as give that man a slant, right, and a step, and right. a, and a ball on target, and he's gone. Well, he's absolutely luck, gone. And good luck defending the curl route. He's got late hands. He's an extraordinary center fielder. He's got long ass arms. I think he's yeah. got the same length of arms as Cortland Sutton does, and that dude's. Six right. three, six inches taller, four yeah. inches, five inches taller. Well, well the, the the funny thing about this is, he's getting pushed back to the end of these types of picks normally, and the wide receivers in this range are all over the place. But yeah, you throw in a Gusecki, and you throw in a potential. Some people are, you know, the Naimheims for sure. Kalen Balaj is around here. Some people are throwing a Lamar Jackson up here. Some people are all, you know, this at, is all one quarterback. Allen Hearns flashes his head up here if he's a free agent in some drafts like it's it, yeah well this is one quarterback discussion but the you got the james washington you got the antonio brown's got a contract he's not going anywhere you got the juju smith schuster he's new he's not going anywhere obviously Le- Le'Veon bell could go anywhere at any time but then you got the you got the big ben who's says he's playing for four years now last week he was retiring and and yeah. you know he's a shot away from being on the shelf but all that into play, but then James Washington's college quarterback comes over in the middle of the draft right. to join him. You know, so that's exactly the, 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 right here. Even if James Washington takes that year to make his way into the like steady it's enough target, Steelers. It, great play by the Steelers. If if James Washington, unlike some of these other guys, like you, you know, I, I, Anthony Miller, Michael Gallup, I, I like all those guys just fine, and it might take you know a year or two for them to be comfortable in your lineup same thing for james washington but the and i'm not saying that that quarterback rudolph's going to come in here and be big ben obviously if he did the steelers struck gold and if that you know but he was talked about as a first late you know late first round quarterback slipped to the big third arm, big slipped, kid slipped to the third round was probably the most accurate deep ball thrower in college that's because he had james washington because he had james too. washington <laughs> And so throw that thing that's, up, Bubba. I, there, and, and you know what? Antonio Brown's been a big enough headache. He might not. He might not play out that contract in Pittsburgh. It, it, crazier things has happened. So, the fact that James Washington is on a team that loves to air it out. Now they did lose their offensive coordinator, so things are going to be a little different over there. But they bring in this quarterback that he played with for years, and the quarterback that made him the Blitnikoff winner is on his team. I love James Washington in right. Dynasty League. So outside of. Um, Dante Pettis, who went to the Niners, who were two in attempts last year, and Zona was 598. Um, Pittsburgh comes in right behind him with 590 passing attempts last year. Obviously, you have Le'Veon Bell on your team. You're still throwing it around the yard sure. all day long. They love to throw it out of any of these other players that were drafted outside of Kirk and um, San Francisco, Dante Pettis, which you know I'm not really equating Dante Pettis because I don't, I don't know when he how or when he's getting on the field. Yeah. I know how James Washington's getting on the field. There's a ton of targets here. And then you look at Chicago, dead last in attempts, obviously passing the ball. Obviously, they changed uh, head coaches, and you're going to see him air it out more. But not a lot of volume over there in Anthony Miller's world. You saw that we talked about the Cowboys. They're 29th in attempts. Exactly. So, like, there's there he may not be. You know, there's guys who hog volume over there a lot, but there is Perfectly still said. some volume to be had over there in uh, Pittsburgh. Perfectly said, and I, let me cut you off here because I don't want to lose this. And we talked about Anthony Miller being about the least uh, defensed player on the field. Man, between Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell, like Juju had a reason for being wide open. And now you throw in Juju's a threat. James right, Washington you had you Martavis on the field you too. You can't even defend Martavis. What, what, uh, uh, James Washington, not Martavis. But in what world can you even put a guy over the top of James Washington when you got Antonio Bryan on the other side and or beside Antonio him in the Brown. slot? Bra- yeah, <laughs> Antonio Brown and the other side in the slot, maybe beside, you know, they move Antonio Brown all over the place. I love that part. But also Le'Veon Bell, like in where in the world is a defensive help coming on James Washington? And if you don't have defensive help, God help you. Right. And an interesting thing is, is, you know, obviously 
Juju could be moving outside a little more, but they use Juju in the slot a, a fair amount last year. So there's there I don't obviously maybe Juju doesn't come off the field for for James Washington a rookie because Juju does a lot of things really well, especially the run blocking, and he's a he's that kind of a guy. But when you look at he had 242 snaps outside with 77 targets and that you know that that's a good bit it's 18 percent. but then he had 246 snaps in the slot 36 targets Who so come on juju juju smith yeah. schuster so that's over half of his uh snaps were in the slot well and when you really get down and look at it i mean cooper cup was just above him in slot percentage at 58.7 and juju was at 58 percent. just to give you a reference jarvis was 64 percent. yeah and he was ranked 20th yeah. in the slot percentage so there is a chance that james washington gets well, I like that. And the Pittsburgh Steelers drafted this dude in the second round, into the second round, but in the second round, and all he did was line up on the right side in college. So it's not like they saw him, you know, running Same around. Same with Juju. That's what, you know, so like Juju comes in here and t- takes a ton of snaps out of the, out of the slot, obviously because Martavis Bryant's on the field and probably, you know, not no head in the playbook. You got your to, replacement right here. Right. I don't think there's any reason that James Washington can't come in here and find a spot. Whether or not they want to move him around was one thing, but they move Antonio Brown everywhere, and then Juju's moving around, as Casey just pointed out. So, I mean, James Washington's not like he needs to come in here and well be like, oh, half. well, sorry, man, slot's full. Yeah, don't well see you later. Yeah, the snaps in the slot for Juju. So I don't see that. That number may decrease a little, but I think it'll be around where it was. And when we broke down, they don't necessarily have a go-to tight end. And they, who's your fourth receiver? Eli Rogers, I guess that I think he's a free agent, isn't he? No, we we talked know. about how James Washington could possibly do more than what he was asked to do at right. Ohio or uh, Oklahoma State. You know, they they had Atman over there on the other side. They had their offense the way they wanted. It was a very simple offense, and he just lined them up, and they did what he did best, and he crushed his assignment. But that doesn't necessarily mean he can't excel at other areas of the field. Right, and he's. He's a high character guy. He's going to put in the work to do whatever they ask of him. So the the sky's the limit with this guy. I know there's a lot of other mouths to feed and some prolific players on this team and maybe it's not a guy you're trying to start every week and I think that's probably why I have those other wide receivers over this guy cuz I think there's going to be more immediate production. But like honestly if you wanted to take James Washington over Gallup or Anthony Miller, I can't that's really argue that's what with I've you been too saying much the whole time like bingo. you can just kind of juggle all these guys around a little bit and yeah if you maybe you hate James Washington, you're like, there's no way you could take him. He's a one trick pony. He ran a four or five four. Yeah, he's slow. He's, he's a one trick pony. Any slow, his metrics are bad. It's well, like, that's all, what, right, all right, man. That's what, you could take these. What, I, what I've been saying the whole time is these guys are all like differently by different people in different spots. Right, but uh, let me say this about this because if if nobody if somebody listening to this hasn't been in a rookie draft or you've been in one or two, fine. If you've been in ten, great. I was in five FFPC rookie drafts a month ago and. I didn't see one person really like stamp James Washington that, you know, at the two one, like everybody, somebody, all those other guys had, everybody had somebody, every, every draft had like a Gallup went in the first round in one of those leagues. Anthony Miller went one twelve in one of those leagues. You know, somebody put their stamp on one of those. Yeah. Hines went early in one of those leagues. Like James Washington, probably because of what we're saying here is a part of his a, a part of the what is good about James Washington nobody on defense can even pay attention to this right. guy and they because don't, they don't want Brown to even possibly Juju. have to wait a year exactly. and there's so much good stuff that could be happening and he could blossom right in front of your eyes if he could have eight touchdowns this year so if you're sitting there at the two four two five spot in a one quarterback league and you're like man I'm I, I this and this and that you know I'm gonna miss on this guy you could literally get gift wrap James Washington all yeah. day long and just feel great about it. And I'm if you're not, in a, certainly if you're not in a upset su- about it, if you're in a super flex. I mean, I got James Washington at two nine in a super flex and cartwheels. I don't have a problem of having any of these guys receiver wise that we just talked about. Yeah, me either. And it's, it varies for me day to day. And, and but this is I'm my in- this is the drop off point for me. Like I like Pettis and all, but I don't. I would just just get James Washington and then there's another notch down. Yeah. <laughs> And away we go. Let's move on to 2-6 here. Yeah. So in 2-6, I believe I'm up picking for Jordan's team. Yeah. Which it's a little barren over there, especially in the receiver room. Let's see who his starting receivers are. So he has DeAndre Hopkins, which that's two receivers. So good for him. (laughs) And then he's got Jordy Nelson, who... Had been awesome. Had been awesome, and there's a good chance he returns to being at least start, startable weekly this okay. year, possibly. Some people say no, some people say yes. But outside of that, it's Kenny Britt, 
and it's Jordan Matthews are basically the only two other startable guys. Those guys are on the same team. I like Jordan Matthews a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, you could get some good production from Jordan Matthews, but you just don't know. It's the Patriots. They got a lot of parts and pieces. Exactly. He's got to just get healthy. I mean, that's exactly. the right. same thing for Jordan him. Matthews is the one guy out there, that, like the very one guy out there where if you see him on the field and he's playing and he looks healthy, his value, his value could shoot straight sky right. high. But right now, he we haven't seen him healthy in a while. And, and Basically like dead to rights at this point. So huh? there's... there's a barren wasteland of receivers here that needs that he needs to be addressed. I want to take Gasecki. I like Gasecki as a player. Um, and maybe I should have just went and taken him and just punted on this season for this team, even though he does have Le'Veon Bell and Hopkins. So you're always in it. But he's got five quarterbacks for some reason in a one quarterback league. And they're all good quarterbacks. I don't except for Deshaun Kaiser. He's got Wentz. Bradford who will get some starts. He's got Garoppolo. He's got Cam Newton. But I mean, yeah, Jimmy G. In a one Carson. quarterback league, unless somebody's guys get hurt in the middle of the season, they're chasing playoffs like me. Jimmy not G. That accessible. You don't. Nobody wants them because you have one. They don't want to give you anything good right. for them. In a twelve-team one quarterback league, it is absolutely unnecessary to have Jimmy G. Carson Wentz and Cam Newton. Obviously, Carson Wentz got hurt last year. Jimmy G. was a backup to start the season. That's a, that's a tricky, dicey situation. But at this point, coming into the year. This man needs to trade a quarterback if he can get anything for it. Right. And in your, when you're in that position, nobody's going to give you anything for, obviously he's got five quarterbacks and Kaiser and Bradford could be cut. Somebody might give you something for Cam Newton because he's a top five quarterback when he's healthy. Jimmy G's a beast. He's Jimmy yeah, G I mean, and you, Jimmy G and Carson Wentz is the guy. Like you need to try to trade one of those guys and take advantage of like the just fan. You got to try to trade whichever sharks, one and whoever will give you the most for yeah. any of them. Yeah. So, okay. But he's fair an Eagles enough. fan, so there's no way he's trading Wentz. Okay. Fair enough. He'll give up Jimmy G. Um, so I, I I wanted to take Kaseki. I originally pretty much took Kaseki, and then I looked at this team and I was like, man, I really need to take a shot at wide receiver here. So I went with Dante Pettis. Um, the Niners obviously moved up a ton of spots to draft Dante Pettis. Came out of nowhere in that early second round. Ridiculously crazy. And you got to like the draft capital. And I love the 49ers system. And I love the 49ers quarterback. And I love what they're doing all and over the place. And you're a 49ers fan. I'm a Niners fan. But it has nothing to do with this pick. I really don't even like Dante Pettis that much. Um, I, whose spot does he take first and foremost when we start talking about Pettis? Like, is he starting for Garcon? No way. Like, Garcon's a wily veteran. Unless he's hurt and not going to play anymore, Garcon's out on this field. Sure. Marquise Goodwin played fantastic last year. and He's got was, a role. Well, got a role and in an integral part of what he does. And then Trent Taylor's your slot guy. And I love what? Trent Taylor. I think Trent Taylor's going to be a strong player for Jimmy G. He's perfect for what Jimmy G wants to do. Jimmy G's an intermediate middle of the field kind of thrower well that's i think that's what people are going to say to cut you to cut you right off on that trent taylor slot i think people are going to say why isn't pettis coming in here and taking that spot maybe i don't i just don't see him taking just coming in here and just having full autonomy of the the slot like i just <laughs> i just don't see it happening i think trail trent taylor is built and bred for that spot i could tell you like everyone's like well they took the 49ers moved up to draft this guy. They took him in the second round. They must love him. They need. A, they obviously need wide receivers in, in 49er land. And I think this guy may have to sit back and enjoy his ride this year. And then maybe next year or, or somewhere along those lines, so he starts to slot. I'm not saying that he's not going to play this year. He's going to play a fine amount. Well, he's a versatile guy. I mean, when you right. watch the when you watch some of the game, uh, the draft breakdown games in in some of them it's really annoying they don't highlight where he is right and it's hard to find him you got to pause it and be like where's pettis because he moves every single play he's in a different place on the field so he he's all over he's that was probably one of his best attributes um he's, he's, he's a very a, usable piece for them and i like right. like i said i like the niners offense i like the way they scheme i just don't know whose role he's taking over to come in and like any of those other guys that we just talked about i know where they're going on the, i know where right. they're starting on their team but i just don't know where pettis is starting garçon on this team. is is on the wrong side of 30 sure sure that's old. what i'm saying and, and he's coming off of a neck injury right so right. it's not like the, for sure we don't know that he's back and and gonna be super healthy i, I if he is he's awesome and right. i love pierre but i mean he could he, he could not healthy, be right. Exactly. That, that neck issue is a 31 or 2-year-old dude. Well, just like you said about finding Pettis on the screen when you're watching him and he moves everywhere. Like I said, the plays the, right into what Kyle Shanahan wants to do. It's his the world Steelers, living in it, man. The Steelers, gonna, didn't, the Steelers didn't take James Washington in the second round without knowing that he lined up in the right-hand side of the field every single play. And Kyle Shanahan doesn't trade up into the second round to take this guy, Pettis, without knowing that he's a you know career leader in kick returns and... That he moves all over the place. Well, we're going to stop. We're going we're to stop traffic right there. I know. I know. But let me to, to finish. Just like Jay Wayne jumped in when I said that, Mike 
uh, Kyle Shanahan, his dad's Mike. Kyle Shanahan is a chess piece master, and he just drafted a chess piece. So if and I said that I wasn't fa- a fan of Pettis in our pre-draft breakdown because I wasn't sure what he would do for an NFL team, and it's the same exact. It's just like. You know, everybody, yeah, McKinnon did play well last year and he really played well in a couple of games. But then all of a sudden, Kyle Shanahan wants him and he's a second, th- he's a third round dynasty startup pick, right? So if Kyle Shanahan likes him, I like him too. If Kyle Shanahan likes Pettis, I like Pettis. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying that I don't like Pettis to be the chess piece that Kyle, I just don't know where he's fitting in right away. And he's a rookie receiver just for the all, we just had to hear you say over and over again <laughs> about rookie receivers. Like, I don't know whose spot he's taking. All those other guys, I know whose spot they're taking, where they're playing on the field. I'll tell you why the 49ers took this guy. I'll tell you why they traded up to take this guy. It's not because, yeah, he's a, he's a good chess piece and he's versatile. That, that goes into it. And they need a receiver. Sure. But the kickoff rule has just changed in the NFL. So the way the kickoff goes and the way it's set up, like you're not allowed to do the things that you were doing before. Like nobody can start running before the ball's kicked on the kicking side of the ball. Yep. Everyone has to be spread out. You can't load up guys in one particular part of the field. Everyone's spread out for the kicking team. I don't. You can go watch videos of how this is going to set up. But for the kicking team, pretty much everybody is like 15 yards off the ball and they can't really start moving until somebody on the offensive side of the ball either catches the ball or I think it's 15 yards down the field. Not 100% sure how it goes. And there can only be three guys back past that 15-yard um, mark for the receiving team. There can be three guys back there. And there can be no wedges. There can be no holding hands with two guys and trying to block for your guy. There's none of that. It's basically setting up to be a punt return to try to get collisions down and they're doing everything they can to keep this as an integral part of the game because it is an integral part of the game. It's very unsafe and they're trying to make it safer. Um, and But a lot of guys, like there's a ton of players in the league that make their bread and butter and get their chances and you would have never found out about them if they didn't get to play special teams. Right. And it's a big part of the game. It's just, you know, every time you hear a coach talk about it, it's about the three phases. Yes. Special teams is one of those phases. You have to win it, but the good special teams teams are typically good all-around football teams. They get a W. Right. Ravens, so Kyle Shanahan and this guy see this coming, and Dante Pettis and Christian Kirk are the two top kick, kick returners, returners and punt returners in the nation, bar none, probably Pettis being the best. Yeah, um, definitely. So basically what the 49ers... I've read a bunch of stuff about this, and basically what the 49ers were saying was that where they're trying to set the bar and get an edge on everybody because we just drafted the best guy who's going to give us a chance to flip fields and score points off of kick returns and punt returns. Yeah. So they're trying to get ahead of the league, and they're saying that this could be a trend-setting move by them where p- people are moving up and because it's a big, just like I said, it's three parts of the game. Exactly. you got to win at all three parts of the game. you got to take advantage of the rules. Guess what happened in the offseason when you didn't even, you couldn't, you were like, oh, well, what happened over there at Patriots? Why are they taking Cordero Patterson? Exactly. I can tell you why. That's Because when, Cordero Patterson is one of the best returners in the league. I was just and they were miles ahead of everybody yep. else. I was just about to say that. When Casey broke all this stuff down to me why about the Why do you think the, the Cowboys change, just picked up Tavon Austin? Uh, about, this, about this rule change, and Casey was explaining all this stuff to me that he just told you guys. He told me the same thing, just like he just told you. He was teaching me about this. And that's, that's the first thing out of my mouth. I was like, oh, my God, that's why the Patriots went and got Cordero Patterson. Right. He was like, exactly, because Shanahan's going to be ahead of the curve and nobody's slipping anything past Belichick. No shot. Hey, first thing that happened in, in the offseason was the Patriots got, got Cordero Patterson. First thing that happened. So and when, like, when you look at it, you're like, oh, cool, the Patriots just got one more piece to be a kick returner. Well, now the kick return game has changed. Yes. And Cordero Patterson is a great piece for them. Yeah. And yeah. now Tavon Austin on the Cowboys. You're going to see another it. piece that could be a nice return piece for the Cowboys. Like, I'm not saying that the 49ers just specifically only took him for that reason, but I've read a ton of place, a ton of articles from a ton of different places with a ton of credible sources saying that this is the a big reason why they decided to trade up and go after and target him as that receiver that they were going after. Yes, he's a chess piece for Kyle Shanahan, and I love that. This, that, that goes in, that's a part of the chess piece, though. And when, if you could tell right. any coach in the league that he can win a field position battle with a second-round pick, he'll do it. And have the most electric guy back there with the potential to score that's six That's what I'm points. saying. That's your second. So when it, cause it, when it happened and Pettis goes off the board in front of some, you know, some higher-touted wide receivers, I'm just couldn't wrap my head around it. I was slow to this kick rule. Pettis was the fourth wide receiver off the That's board. That's what I'm saying. I, I didn't put all this together, and then when Casey put it all together for me, it's just like a light bulb. Like, sure, Pettis could get out there and catch 
some balls from Jimmy G if that's what Kyle wants him to do. But it's more than obvious that Kyle's like, hey, this is how we roll. Watch. We're ahead of the curve. We're going to do this right. Right. And, and I got a piece that is going to be very usable. I just don't know where it fits in this year as far as a receiver. I'm sure he's going to get on the field. He's going to get his chances. And just like we like to talk about with special teams players, you're getting a chance to be on the field, showcase your talents, and earn more reps. Sure. Right. Um, so I'm not hating on Dante Pettis by any means. He's my least favorite receiver from a receiver standpoint. And if you know you want to talk about Pettis and the return yardage and stuff, like you got you to gotta love Christian Kirk even more in anything that offers a return yardage. Right. Uh, kind of game here so I'm not meaning to hate on Dante Pettis at all and the chess piece is a is a, is a good idea I just no, I don't I, I mean the versatility plays into right. it for no, sure. absolutely. no absolutely I'm, I'm, and, but but on top of that I mean he's, he's he's a fluid route runner we gave him a ton of credit for for little wasted movement and his and he's got pretty decent hands and then we said like those are good building blocks to build upon right and then on top of that he does like the little things he blocks his ass off yeah so there's a lot of reasons why I could see that they'd be appealed Right, he would be appealing to take. Plus, especially they're, they're out west. He's a West Coast guy. They, they, you know, I, I, I get to play, watch I, him more. Probably yeah. plays into some. He's over in Washington. They're in San Francisco. It's a kind of you know Pacific Northwest kind of deal over Gotta there. You see, see him a lot. More. You see a lot more, and you yep. can talk. He's more accessible. You can talk to people who know. Right. All, right. Obviously, you're in the NFL, so you can talk to whoever the hell you want. The yeah. same time Just zone saying, helps. You know. Right. You know. I can call this dude in the morning, and he's he's not asleep still. So that's. <laughs> I'm taking P- Pettis for this guy. Maybe he doesn't help him out this year per se and i don't i don't wouldn't feel co- like just like we talked about him when we we're ra- actually breaking him down i don't know where the fantasy points if he's going to be able to get for fantasy points right. for your team and you're comfortable playing him this year there's not I think much he's better gonna develop, placed in san fran right to get some fantasy i think he's going to sit, sit sit back and re- enjoy his learning curve and maybe there's less of a learning curve for this type of guy which we like these high and character he, guys and he comes from a professional family his right. brother played in the league for a while his dad is a professional athlete like he's he's got yeah, he knows how pedigree. to agree yeah he For sure. knows how to be a professional athlete. All right. Well, that's why I took Dante Pettis there again. Need on this team, kind of the last. I could obviously Traquan Smith would be like the only other guy I'd be interested in, kind of taking and putting a guy on your team that would be ready to play. Uh, but I'm not taking Traquan Smith over Dante Pettis. Somebody likes Dante definitely Pettis not way more than, than definitely and, not and over definitely Gusecki. not over Gasecki. Yeah. I mean. In actuality, I probably should have taken Gasecki, but when you look at the receivers, it's barren over there. So you I'm just trying wanted to, to help get you out. wanted to get your your kickoff spiel into the show tonight. I would have got it somewhere. I would have got it in the after show. Or <laughs> he wanted his kickoff spiel in the we show. I just in. saw I saw a need, and Gasecki's not. They, he has Charles Clay and Kyle Rudolph, so it's not necessarily a glaring need. It's non non premium. Gasecki would be a nice home run cut, and you could just wait until next year, which maybe you're waiting for next year for Pettis. Yeah, anyway, I wouldn't say even drafting any any wide receiver in the second round is make or break on whether or not you're passing on the season or not. I would probably I could, I don't have a problem with taking Dante Pettis because Pettis could come out and be a monster for if Kyle Shanahan wants him to catch a hundred balls, he's catching a hundred balls. You better believe that. So I don't have a problem with it. I probably would have taken Gasecki as well, yeah, that's just fair. from the name cachet. That's fair. that's fair. Just from the lack of playmakers over in. Uh, the Dolphins over in the Dolphins and they're cl- it's kind of clear to me what they're looking to do they're looking yeah. to have a pass catching slot kind of move around versatile piece in, in Gusecki and it's tough for the freshman tight ends to come in and right really We're do work spoiled. but we you could spoiled with Hunter Henry you and could Evan get Ingram. some touchdowns out of him much like a Hunter Henry and, True. and, and some catches so yeah and Gase is very excited about him that's very appealing and Gusecki's gonna go off yeah, the board uh, any second here but ready to wrap it up yeah we just gave you picks one through six of the second round two through six wow I said one through six of the Two second round. Six. Well, yeah, one through six of the second round. That plays. You didn't let me finish. Oh, well, you're done. That plays. I'm like your wife. <laughs> she always lets you me finish. You didn't let me finish. Bah. You don't let her finish. It's a Hardly race. Hardly ever. All right, speaking of finishing, let's get We're out of here. We're pretty competitive, so it's... Let's get... <laughs> hey, she's a really fast... Ru- well, she's more my, about the long game. She's you a had long as sp- much time as I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we paper, rock, scissor for it? Let's get out of here. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, if, if you liked what you heard today, go on iTunes. Give us a five-star review. Huge shout-out to anybody that's already done that. We see the numbers going up every week. Thank you so much. If you haven't taken the Absolutely. time to do it, please go over there. Just tap the little five stars. Take you two seconds, and it would really help us out. We really appreciate it. If, you, if you're on YouTube, definitely hit subscribe. Um, and if, if, you, if you haven't gone to our YouTube page, go check it out. You can... We're building a nice little repertoire of players. You can search on YouTube for them and find our our, our breakdowns and get a more granular search. Yeah. Um, to hit subscribe on any of your other platforms of choice: Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Let me and let me just jump in here real quick on that, Jay Wayne. 
if right now when if you pull up iTunes and you search Dynasty Fantasy Football and you're in under iTunes, we pop up first. And that's because of the listeners, that's because of the downloads, that's because of the five star reviews. And we really, really appreciate it. And if anybody that's listening to this right now hasn't done that, please do that. And if you are listening to this, maybe it's your first time and you don't know why in the world we just talked for an hour and 45 minutes on six draft picks. <laughs> yeah, please don't, don't go give us a, a, a crappy review because we went two hours on six draft picks. We do that for your pleasure. Right. Yeah. And we're about to give you our email address. Send us some hate mail. Hit us up on Twitter. Don't don't go one star reviewing us because because well, let's talk it out. <laughs> let's talk it out. Let's talk it out. Let's get that some peer mediation. Yeah. Four, if your if worst, your worst you know? review is that it's too long, right? Come That's, on, man. we're efforting. We're yeah. efforting. If you don't like Trying that, to talk come some on, things out. Man. Let's talk it out. Yeah. All right. You can listen in multiple segments. I promise. You don't yeah. Well, you to it you don't have to listen to it all the way through. You can come back tomorrow. We'll be right there for your pleasure. Wait, no one queued yet. up and ready to play. All right. Well, let's get out of here. Till next time. You've been listening to the FF Dynasties. Married to the game.